now oh, okay. live. So, so the, the live so stream the is now. now. The, okay. Right, we're now live stream. Well, look, welcome everyone to the uh, to this extraordinary meeting of the Wellington City Council, uh, 9th of April, uh, 2020. These these are definitely extraordinary circumstances. So this is the first meeting, official meeting we've ever had uh, by Zoom like this. Uh, I'm going to start off uh, for all the audience who will be joining us and, and welcome everyone uh, with the karakia. Um, Councillor Day will do the karakia at the end of the meeting. Uh, we'll go through some housekeeping and then we will uh, move to the uh, the public participants of whom we have five and then we'll go to the agenda. All the public participants have been asked to uh, keep their time to five minutes which is less than we would normally have but given the, the circumstances of the meeting uh, we want to be able to get through it in a reasonably efficient manner. So I'll start with the karakia. Whakataka te hau ki te uru. Whakataka te hau ki te tonga. Kia mā kina kina ki uta. Kia mā tara tara ki tai. E hi ake ana te atakura. He tio, he huka, he hauhu, ti he Māori ora. Now, I've already declared the meeting open. I don't think we have any apologies. Can we just check that? I see none. Um, announcements by the Mayor. Look, I just wanted to make one announcement, and that is that we are in, um, obviously, circumstances that we have never been in before. And hopefully, we will never be in again. As a nation, I think we are doing incredibly well. Uh, we've heard today that we, uh, the number of people who have been uh, deemed infected by the COVID virus has only gone up by 29. We appear to be on the right track. And I think that is a fantastic credit to our leadership in, this, in the government, uh, but to everybody, every New Zealander. I think people are doing a fantastic job. And if we can get through this quickly, we will uh, reduce the harm to our people, to reduce the harm to our economy, uh, and we will obviously get ourselves out of lockdown faster. I want particularly at this stage to thank all the council staff. Uh, what should really say, I want to thank all the people who are working in essential industries across the whole of our city, um, because they are the ones that are keeping us fed, uh, keeping us safe. But I want to thank all the council staff who have worked incredibly hard, uh, both in terms of looking after our essential uh, services, but also in terms of the immediate response to the COVID-19 situation, and the staff who've put in an enormous amount of work and a very short, uh, in a very short time frame, to put together the papers which we'll be considering today. So I thought that it was worth recording that, uh, and I again just want to say thank you, and thank you also to all the councillors for, um, you know, getting up to speed with new technologies and trying to work together in a, in a completely new environment. Uh, that takes us to conflict of interest. Uh, are there any conflict of interest declarations? I see none. Confirmation of the minutes of the emergency meeting held on the 23rd of March. I'm going to move that. Seconded by, can somebody raise a hand, please? Uh, so yeah, can, uh, Deputy Mayor, thank you. Right, is there any debate on that? I see none. Uh, can I ask for the nays, please? Are there any nays? Again, I see none. So we'll take that and it will be recorded as unanimous. Moving on to the next page of the, I think that takes us to our, um, that takes us to public participation. There are no items not on the agenda, so public participation. Uh, and I think I see you, Matt, uh, who's going to start us off? Is it Maura, you're there as our first person, am I correct? Yes. Yes, hi Maura. Hi. Hi, well, welcome. Um, nice to have you on board, and it's a very different circumstances. So um, we are keeping a, we'll keep a track of time, uh, and you've got five minutes. Um, and at the end of the five minutes, um, you know, if you want to leave time for questions, we'll try that, but that's going to be very difficult, I think. So if you want to speak to us for five minutes, we, we look forward to that. Thank there you. There you go. I believe we've got a slideshow that Cyrus has, so we'll see yeah. if that comes up. Just one second. Okay, we won't start the clock until... Actually, Jennifer, can I just check who's keeping the clock on the on these times as well while we're waiting for the slideshow to come up? Cyrus is keeping the clock and he's going to say one minute when there's one minute to go. Thank you. Okay, have we got the slideshow up yet? Yeah. No. And Cyrus, if you can please not start the clock until the slideshow is up. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to share the screen. If everyone tells me if... Uh... 
And Jennifer, uh, just to check, you can you enable my, uh, my share screen? It has been disabled. If the host could please enable that. Should be able to now, Cyrus. Yeah. Okay, can everybody see the screen? Yep. Okay. okay. Right. Okay. We're up and good. Now, um, who, you're going to just indicate um, when you need things changed and Cyrus will move it. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay, right. Okay. Thank you. Right. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. If you could just start the show, that would be great. Oh, just from the first slide, if you could just play it. Slideshow, okay. Yeah, just, just play it as a regular slideshow. Okay. And we'll start, we'll start the time now. Okay. Where you go. Good afternoon, Chair, Mayor and Councillors. My name is Maura Rigby and I'm the co-owner of two Wellington hospitality establishments. And today I am here to talk to you to call for more support from local government for my sector. Can you go to the next slide? Can you see that? Next slide. Slide. Yes, next slide. This one. Just the, the next slide. Can I control it myself? No. Is it slide number two, this one? Yes, slide number two. Is this one correct? It, it hasn't changed yet. Oh, because it's, okay, maybe because it, it's- We will extend the time, okay. Yeah. So the hospitality sector has been greatly affected by COVID-19. As a non-essential service, we've been completely shut down for four weeks. And the four week lockdown loss to the hospitality industry has been estimated at over $1 billion. The Restaurant Association's recent survey has estimated that about a fifth of businesses are considering closing their doors for good or a, that fear that this event will put them out of business. A fifth of Wellington's hospitality businesses would be approximately 374 businesses shutting their doors permanently. The message coming through strongly from the Minister of Finance and the government now is that we need to use this time to prepare for the new normal, the new normal being alert levels three to one. Could you please change the slide? As a response to this, I have created a petition with the support of others. And that petition is calling for the government and local government to support hospitality to get through this challenging time. The petition has gained more than 2,000 supporters and signatories in four days. And it specifically asks for emergency off licenses to be made available for holders of current on licenses for the duration of the COVID-19 crisis for financial relief um, from the council, from council fees for the hospitality industry. Also financial relief for the property rates and fees that our landlords experience in the hospitality industry. Can you please change the slide? I just wanna talk a little bit more about emergency off licenses to be made available for current on license holders so that they can allow for the delivery of alcoholic beverages during the duration of the COVID-19 crisis. This would ensure that licensed establishments can maintain some portion of their regular trade during levels two to three of the alert system to stay afloat. This is in line with the emergency measures taken this in several states of Australia and most of the United States of America and recently by the Dunedin City Council in the form of a special license. A COVID-19 special license can be drafted or urgent changes to the Liquor Act can be made under the Epidem Epidemic Preparedness Act and the Ministry of Justice is responsible for making these changes. Under an emergency situation such as the one that we're in, these changes can be made very quickly. The hospitality sector needs this in place before the end of the lockdown. The economic impact of making a change like this and a bold move like this is much, much greater than reducing fees or rates reductions. This is not a central government issue. 
Wellington City Council can take the lead on this and greatly assist its sector. Financial relief for council fees for the hospitality industry. Your agenda addresses this issue to some extent with welcome relief for liquor and food licensing, including the waiving of fees for the fourth quarter listed under your immediate action. This offers a typical restaurant or tavern with approximately less than $1,000 of financial relief. Non-licensed premises would receive even less benefit. Our sector would like to see pavement licenses, encroachment licenses and water rates added to this list, as often pavement licenses are actually more than food and liquor licenses. Next slide. My third point in the um, petition is that financial relief for property rates for the landlords of the hospitality industry is incredibly important. You address this to some extent in your agenda with a six a rates holiday propose that is subject to interest. Many people in our industry are struggling to negotiate meaningful rate, rent reductions with their landlords as we speak. We believe a reduction in rates or, and or deferred payments without interest is much more appropriate for the landlords of the most affected sectors, which hospitality is definitely one of. If the purpose of the rates holiday is to offer relief to businesses, this isn't enough leverage for tenants to negotiate significant rent reductions and not enough to impel landlords to make great concessions. And land revenue and ACC are not charging interest on payments that are deferred to heavily affected businesses. Wellington City Council should follow along. Next slide. You've got just a few seconds. Beyond the petition and looking forward, the hospitality industry needs your support to make it through this challenging time. While well intentioned, your current measures equate to less than $1,000 of direct financial relief to licensed hospitality businesses, less to non licensed businesses. Plans to make changes to weekend parking fees are a great idea, but they aren't enough. It's not time to tinker around the edges. We need innovative solutions that have much greater economic impact than just fees and rates relief alone. We need to look positively to the future together and adapt for the new normal. That's the end. Well, Rithid, thank you very much and well done. And we've, we've heard the message um, very clearly and I know that it's going to be replicated by some messages which we will get from uh, some of the other public participants. Uh, and it was also subject of a conversation that we had with, um, uh, with uh, two more members of the hospitality uh, industry, one of, at least one of whom is going to be speaking shortly about looking at some of those um, regulatory changes that you were talking about in terms of special licenses. Yes. So thank you. And feel free to stay on. Okay, thank you. Okay, I, I believe that Wade, um, Wade Martelli, Martelli is next. Sorry for is that, right? Wade? Can you hear me? Oh, there you are, Wade. Right. Yeah. Can you hear me all right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, greetings, Andy and I assume the other councils are there somewhere, not with you, but, or, well, <laughs> online. But, um, yeah, so I only just showed this together, like, about half an hour ago, but um, I don't really have a lot to say. Um, I'll just firstly say that um, the lockdown by the Prime Minister, I thought, came just at the right time. I was actually saying a few days before that happened because of all the all the deaths happening in Italy that we should be locking down, but I'm happy that that happened. Um, yeah, uh, 100, oh, sorry, 919 deaths in a single day in Italy. That's just incredible, really. Um, and I will just say, because I'm going to be quick here, but um, I don't know if you saw the news that um, there were cats over in New York they have caught, caught coronavirus, some tigers and lions. I don't know if you heard that. Um, so I was just, I'm just concerned, possibly it might not happen, but it's potentially, there might be 
might need to be a curfew for cats, if you, if you get what I mean. Like they might, I'm not saying it's going to jump to our fairly fairy felines over here, but if it did, if that happened, that would have the potential to spread just out of control. Um, yeah, that's the stuff there. So um, um, the other thing is, as we know, rats or oh, cats themselves, they, they spread lots of nasty stuff. That's why they've got the vaccinations and all the rest of it. Um, there's also the possibility that this will spread to other animals like rats and the, the like, um, which should be a problem in Myrma, but um, the rest of the country could be. Um, and also, you know, I was talking to my sister-in-law and it was like, where is everyone? <laughs> well, everyone is at the supermarket, <laughs> you know? Today was the only day when I went for walks, so it was raining and that I didn't see anyone walking on the street. Um, and this just goes to show that we do not really have reliance, resilience, sorry, and um, everyone buys their stuff from the supermarket, you know, no one, well, not, I won't say no one, but not many people grow their own food at home or have a good supply, even though we are supposed to have a, a supply in terms of for this kind of thing. So there's possibly enough, another thing to consider whether we need to have more of a push in the community once this is over to become more resilient and be more self-sufficient. Um, I was planning to do a talk actually at some point, well, before now, but I just haven't got around to it, so I'm a bit useless, on um, these potential things. And there's many other things can happen as well that you would need to be prepared for in other ways, like survival water in many cases. Um, like, take for example, if we have, have the Havelock problem happen now with the virus and say there's an earthquake, just, you know, three bad things, you know, they'd be pretty bad luck. But I'm not saying it couldn't happen, you know. Um, and I didn't notice that the, the last person was speaking on rate, the, as you know, I'm part of the Community Association for Children Park. Um, and so we have the three options put to us, what was best for the community, possibly to um, suggest it, um, I have suggested to them that the best option in my view would be to give every rate power the option because every situation is going to be different because there's going to be many industries now that are just going to go go south because of what's happened and you know tourism's going to go um, and that's going to flow on to lots of other things. Um, Wade, you, Wade, you've got about 30 seconds left. Okay, yeah, well, that was that was pretty much it. So, yeah, any questions? We won't have time for questions, Wade. Okay. So, look, thank you very much, and, um, you know, please stay safe. Yeah, we'll do. Thank you. you. Take care as well, Andy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Okay, um, next uh, we have uh, Mark Johnson. Is Mark there? Kia ora. Oh, hello, Mark. Kia ora. Um, I'm not sure if my video is on. I will turn it on. Oh, yeah, now it is. Good, there we go. Hi. Um, okay, so uh, my korero today will be brief. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of Cycle Wellington members, um, and we recommend that the Council um, look to the pandemic response plan. And the uh, part of the plan there is uh, item 17, which is to get people active. Um, we think that you should focus on using transport as a tool to get people active. Um, people have started realising the real value of the streets for walking and cycling during the lockdown. Uh, mothers and fathers of young children have been using the quiet streets for riding lessons. And in my suburb and many others, people have been walking carefully on the road to maintain safe distancing, which is not possible on our narrow footpaths. Following the lockdown, we can get people active using active transport and we will need to start reallocating street space. We have an opportunity during lockdown to run trials that reallocate street space for walking and cycling. Um, and 
Uh, this can be expensive, but New Zealand Transport Agency is coming to the table on this with a 90% co-funding package for projects which they dub Innovating Streets. Uh, and all the details for that should be in an email which I've uh, previously sent. Uh, further down the line, the Infrastructure Council of New Zealand is looking for ideas to boost the economy with infrastructure spending. Um, at this point, cycleways are uh, some of the biggest return on investment um, uh, projects uh, in terms of uh, getting population active and improving public health. Uh, the Let's Get Wellington Moving program is perfectly placed to gear up and capture that infrastructure funding. Investing in active transport prepares our city for future pandemics by improving public health. We often talk about the resilience of Wellington in terms of buildings, but the resilience of our Tangata and Tamariki moving into the future depends on exercise being a part of people's daily routines. Uh, and my final point is that parking charges should remain in place post lockdown. It could be contentious, but making parking free for essential workers traveling in lockdown is a sensible idea, so thank you very much for doing that. However, making parking free for everyone when we reach a safe COVID-19 alert level will only incentivize driving, lead to poor outcomes for traffic congestion, parking availability and turnover, and will make walking and cycling less safe and less comfortable. Um, and I refer you to Councillor Condi and Council Officer's study on this, uh, the Comprehensive Parking Policy Review, which I would encourage you to study. Um, You've got time left, fortunately. So um, as there's no questions, I sort of preempted some that you may want to ask. Uh, and I'll just do a round the city uh, list of projects that you might want to think about, um, starting in the Takapu ward. So Jill, Jenny and Malcolm's ward. Um, Tower to Johnsonville is um, a route that lots of our members think about a lot. Uh, it's a difficult route, but it's a route that isn't very well served by cycling infrastructure. Um, up in Farangi Ward, uh, so that's Diane, Simon and Rebecca, the routes between the Koori and the CBD um, are not great for riding, but a lot of people use them at the moment and lots of people would like to use them. Uh, and lanes along Karori Road, uh, in Paikawakawa, that's Fleur and Laurie, and that's, that's where I live. Um, Adelaide Road, Newtown Connections and finally connecting Island Bay through to the CBD with some safe cycling uh, infrastructure. Um, Motu Kairangi, uh, that's Sarah, Sean and Terry's ward, and that's well served already because of Sarah's great work in the area. Um, so I'd like to see them continue and expand around the Bay's cycleway plans. Uh, Pukihinao, that's Nicola, Iona and Tamatha. Um, we'll take a pick. There's Cambridge, Cambridge Terrace, the Keys, uh, Taranaki Street, uh, Victoria Street, and you could even put a lane in uh, on the way uphill to Brooklyn to better serve that suburb with cycle lanes. Uh, if there are time for questions quickly, uh, I'd be happy to take them. Kia ora. Kia ora. Um, uh, thank you for that. Um, I do see one hand up. Oh, Diane, is that a question? Okay, away you go. Just unmute myself. Um, thanks, uh, Mark, for coming in. Um, one of the challenges that we're going to have as a council is we, we've got really two immediate challenges. Obviously, one is community welfare and making sure people get food and that the basic necessities and then the other aspect is economic recovery and how we will recover as a city so um and, and you're talking about cycleways and i'm just wondering how this fits into our media priorities and how you can help support those because i know we've talked you know, we talked about the transport options um but it has been a lot different over the last few weeks we haven't had people commuting to work whether that's by bus, train or vehicle. So it, it is a completely different environment. So could you just sort of try and help us understand how this could fit into priorities around community welfare, the immediate essentials and um, economic recovery? Uh, yeah, so that's two, um, on two fronts. Sorry, Sorry, we, we... one minute. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. Um, so in the immediate aftermath of this uh, pandemic, um, people will be more reluctant to use public transport because of the risk of transmission um, coming towards the end of the pandemic. So it's important that we give people more transport choice. So cycleways, are, uh, making cycle more comfortable and safe is an important part of that. Uh, in terms of economic recovery, um, access to jobs uh, and access to transport um, will become more important as people, you know, it's, it's hard to say these things. People may need to start selling um, their vehicles uh, and, and thinking about other transport options. And you have to support them as a council uh, to do that by allowing people to walk and cycle uh, to work uh, and with improved public transport when that becomes um, an attractive option again. Thank you. Look, uh, thank, thank you very much for that. Um, 
Mark, I think that really takes us to the end of the time. So really, really appreciate that. And um, thanks for all your good work. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, then we have Sarah. Sarah Meikle. Kia ora, tēnā koutou, everyone. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you briefly today. I'd like to acknowledge you, uh, Mayor Andy Foster and the City Councillors. My name's Sarah Meikle and I'm the Chief Executive of the Wellington Culinary Events Trust, the not-for-profit organisation that owns and manages uh, Wellington on a plate, Beavana, and a number of other food and beverage events in Wellington. We work to support and promote the Wellington hospitality and restaurant sector in Wellington and New Zealand, and we are the only city that has an organisation like us in the country, which is a very enviable position. Hospitality is at the core of Wellington's culture. Before I really start today, I'd like to acknowledge the immense challenge that faces us all right now. I realise that the council needs to make some very difficult decisions as we move forward as a city. The way we can support you is to make Wellington's hospitality and restaurant sector thrive again. Hospitality, restaurants and food production are a significant employer in the Wellington region, employing over 20,000 people. If this sector doesn't come out of this crisis ready to go, it's going to be a real pain point for the city with high rates of unemployment, particularly for Wellington as a student-focused employment market in and around the hospitality and restaurant sector. I'd like to thank and acknowledge the Wellington City Council with support of the work that we have done that, of the work that we have done with you to date. You have backed us right from the start. We are extremely grateful for the contribution that the city makes to our events and activities, enabling us to deliver outcomes for the whole hospitality and restaurant sector. Your support of us enables us to leverage significant commercial partnerships with the likes of Visa, who by leveraging the city's investment has enabled us to bring their investment to the table. In fact, last year, the ROI was four to one. Events come in all shapes and sizes. Events don't have to mean thousands of people at a concert or in an indoor venue. Events like Wellington on a Plate are a decentralized model with many, many events happening across hundreds of small venues, largely restaurants and bars, and we have the ability to create demand quickly. This will be essential to the hospitality and restaurant sector as we come out of this current crisis. Wellington on a Plate was initially developed off the back of the GFC in 2009 to solve some very real issues in Wellington. We were dragging our heels through the end of the recession and the winter months were really dire and restaurants and cafes and bars were struggling. There were so few opportunities for the wider Wellington food and beverage producing industry to also connect with one another. And it's starting to feel like a very strangely familiar time that we've got ourselves in now. We established the festival to help our restaurant and hospitality sector to prosper out of hardship. The sector is made up of many, many small businesses who alone struggle to get cut through, but as a group, they are a great force and the work we do supports them to showcase the region's food and beverage sector and to communicate the vibrancy and vitality of our hospitality sector to Wellingtonians. Now, 12 years later, uh, Wellington on a Plate is significant, but still operates in a very decentralized way. In 2019, 310 restaurants, bars and cafes across Wellington took part in the festival. They did this by creating burgers, dine dishes and cocktails. Some ran small events. We also connect and work with substantial regional food, the substantial regional food production value chain. Over 90 local food producers and suppliers were directly involved in the festival last year with their products on menus, new product development opportunities created and building lasting relationships with chefs and restaurants to support local provenance. Our audience is predominantly local Wellingtonians. In fact, 75% of the over 300,000 culinary experiences had during the month long festival last year were from Wellington. We appeal to all ages, but the majority of our audience, 64%, are aged from 25 to 54. We see our response being multifaceted. We need to activate straight away to drive that foot traffic back into restaurants, cafes and bars. We'll need to work together to give consumers confidence to go out again and hand in hand give restaurants and bars the ability to build patronage, cash flow and their staff base again. We're fortunate that we've built Wellington on a plate it, and a very much lift and shift model. It doesn't necessarily need to run in August. It could be two weeks, four weeks, six weeks. It can run in different parts. We can run all or some of the program. Its flexibility and adaptability are its success and will continue to be. We're working on initiatives right now so that we are ready to go when we are able. 
In the words of one of our Wellington restaurant partners, it's a crazy world at the moment, but good to remember why Welly on a Plate started in the first place. And so it will have huge relevance this year, whenever that happens. At the other end of the spectrum, we're also building our response to Beavana. This is a big event and we may be challenged this year to hold it in its traditional format. So we are thinking outside the square. How do we ensure that we can still deliver its benefits to our 30 local craft breweries and numerous craft beer bars? Again, we also have a significant local audience for this event, 50%. There's a big audience of people here in Wellington who still want to engage in some way and we want to be able to support them. So when we're able to deliver Beavana again, it will be as strong as ever. That said, we're going to go ensure that we're ready for the possibility that larger scale events are possible maybe at the end of 2020 and we'll be ready to deliver Beavana if that's the case. When we are through this and we will get through, we will be ready to go. We need our hospitality and restaurant businesses to be well supported as a group so that they can build their businesses to be strong again. The work we do at the Wellington Culinary Events Trust is going to be crucial to the recovery program. We have the infrastructure, the relationships and the knowledge to be able to adapt really quickly and economically to help you support our restaurants and hospitality industry to thrive once more. Your continued support of events such as Wellington on a Plate and Beavana will ensure a successful and prosperous hospitality and restaurant sector in Wellington. And we really look forward to continue to working with you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. And I am very happy to take any questions. Kia ora. Sarah, thank you. You did take the, the time that we had allocated, but um, that was very well put. So thank, thank you. you, really appreciate that. And you're welcome to stay on if you want to as well. Thank you very much. Matt, last but not least, welcome. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, very good. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Matt McLaughlin. Some of you may know me. I'm a Wellingtonian. I'm a business owner in Wellington City for the last 20 years. I'm speaking today on behalf of Hospitality New Zealand. I'm also speaking on behalf of local business owners. Uh, to our council, we need decisive, firm leadership from you. Our city wants to feel safe in the knowledge that the people of the city have been looked after by our elected representatives. Many things... Uh, will be discussed today from our sector. It's a need for the council to be bold, but also to be sensible. You must be there for all Wellingtonians. Now is about the recovery of our city. I'm asking the council to be there for its people. It's time to ensure there is a minimal amount of business closures and job losses. Now is not the time for pet projects or towing the party political line. We must ensure that there is money kept aside to drive people back into our city. The nighttime economy will require the tools to fight our way back. We need a seat at the table to help to plan events, activities, and of course, how the money is spent. The Nighttime Economy Forum is a great start. This needs to be reintroduced and given a priority. It needs to also be industry led. We're asking, um, as Marua and um, Sarah have spoken of before, for financial assistance. Uh, we're asking in the form of rates relief to ensure this is passed on to the businesses and not just to the landlords. Licensing fees, uh, fees need to not only not increase, but they need to be stopped altogether for a period of time. Um, there can also be indirect uh, financial assistance from council. We're talking uh, about uh, potentially some, some takeaway options when we drop down to level three for our businesses, perhaps free car parking, et cetera, for our delivery drivers or our customers. Um, we're talking about the council to help us fund maybe through Creative HQ, a platform for us to run our delivery or a web-based tracing app so we don't have queues outside our doors uh, of people filling in a piece of paper. I'm talking about level two there. Um, we're also looking and asking at bold local initiatives. For example, as talked about before, off-license to be granted to on-licenses at level three and below. Delivering food with a wine match or a cocktail. We're also the craft beer capital. We've got hundreds of thousands of dollars of stock sitting our craft breweries and our bars, that's about to go down the drain. We'll need some help with that. We'd love to look at extended licensing hours. We'd love to talk about themed events and street closures and to plan the planning of big events. We're working closely with other key partners of our own to form our own roadmap post lockdown. Our industry is creative. We are hardworking and we're ready to start again. We're ready to roll our sleeves up to save our businesses, but we need our council to back us and be there for us 100%. That's me. Matt, thank, thank you very much. As, um, we, you've been very quick. Uh, are there any questions? Yes, um, I had my hand raised on the... Um, okay, Tamitha. Tamitha? Lost you there. Tamitha, yeah. 
to Tam, ask a question. Yeah, that's Sorry, yeah, no, yeah, question, yes for Matt. Yeah, yeah, cool, just checking. Um, Kia ora, Matt, thank you for that presentation. Um, I just wanted to touch on a point uh, that you raised around, um, you know, uh, d d developing some kind of app to help with delivery and I guess that contactless kind of customer service. Yep. Um, do you have any ideas for us and how we can stimulate that kind of um, allowing businesses to adapt to the uh, lockdown pressures or different alert levels in terms of their innovation? Yep, I sure do. Um, Creative HQ. I mean, I'm, I'm not a I'm not a web developer. I, I know nothing about that. Um, I'm also not uh, haven't got pots of money. But that's kind of what it needs. It needs uh, someone a lot smarter than me um, with deep pockets to pre perhaps um, develop this kind of thing. Um, we've you know we look at we look at Uber Eats and we look at Deliver Easy. Um, they obviously took years to develop their um, portals and, and how they run things. Um, we'd love to be able to use those guys, but to be realistic, you know they take a thirty percent cut. Um, which is below our, our margins, we're going to lose money on it. So it's just we're, we're looking at um, needing some help to, tr to try and come up with a platform um, for us to, to be able to do deliveries and for the money to actually stay in our pockets, not to go elsewhere. So for, for the council, I'd, uh, I'd ask for some, some moolah or some, some help with the um, pointing us in the right direction and speaking to the right people. Thanks, Matt. Um, I think I saw Fleur there. Yeah, hi. Thanks, hi, Matt. Tom. Hey, look, I'm just interested in your um, comments around off licenses and the role that the council could play there, because yep. the advice we have from our officers is that that would require an amendment to the sale and supply of alcohol act. So have you got different legal advice or can you just expand on on how we might be able to support that initiative uh, consistent with the legislation? Yeah, no, unfortunately, I don't. Um, I had heard that the that Dunedin City Council had had um, put together a, a special license, but I've just I just got information just before we came here that that wasn't actually the case, or, or it had to be changed. But um, again, putting it back to you guys and and, and going, maybe going to Arla. I know I know um, going back to central government is, is going to be needed, but is there some way, shape, or form that we can write a simple um, special license for us to be able to do that? Same with same with. Um, extending the licensing hours. I mean, if you know some of the bars down Courtney Place could perhaps get an extra hour on the weekend, it could really help. Um, there's there's um, processes in place already for us through special licenses to be able to apply. I'm sure that there's a, there's a clever way that we, can, uh, that we can write something up fairly simple. Thank you. But Matt, um, time is up. So look, thank you very much. And again, you're, you're very welcome to, um, to stay on the, the line if you want to. Um, Thanks, I'm Andrew. sure you're not going too far away. No. Thanks very much, Tim. Appreciate it. Thank you. Look, and thank you to all our public participants. Uh, that takes us to um, the, uh, the one paper which we have today, um, I think. So we'll make sure the challenge with this is looking at uh, looking at a screen with all of you on it and then having to flip to another screen with the, uh, the, the program on it. <laughs> it's not the easiest thing to do. Okay, um, so look, I'm, I, I'm very pleased to, um, to introduce uh, the paper. Um, now we need to do, but before we need to do that, we, um, Cyrus, before we yep. do that, we need to deal with those two standing orders, don't we? Yeah. Yep. Okay, right. Okay. So the standing orders standing we were going to- 16, five and 27, uh, uh, five. Okay, so 1605 was the one about standing up uh, to speak at a council meeting and 27. 27. That would be uh, twenty seven point seven for division. Oh, uh, so that is how we record a division. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yep. Right, okay. So um, councillors, uh, I'm going to move that we suspend th those two standing orders. The reason for the division one is simply we will record all the um, uh, all the votes regardless, uh, being a council meeting, but it's just it's an easier way to get people just to stick their hands up at the appropriate time, whether it's an I or an A. Okay, so I'm going to move those seconded by... Uh, is anybody going to put, put a hand up there? I'll just choose somebody. Hang on. I've now got my screen full of suspending standing orders. Oh, there we are, back again. Um, seconded by, thank you, Joel. I'll put that. All those in favour, please raise a hand. 
Um, I think that's everybody, yeah, Sarah. I've raised mine, yes. Yeah, sorry, I'm just putting yeah. my video back on. Yeah, okay, Here right, go. thank you. Yeah, okay, good, that's unanimous. Right, thank you very much. Okay, right, I'll um, introduce, the, introduce the paper. Uh, and I'm going to introduce it as a uh, as an amended substantive, and there's two elements to the amended substantive. One uh, you will have seen, well, I hope you've seen both of them circulated. Uh, the first element is uh, that we would work with Barbara supporting her in um, the pursuit that she's already said uh, in terms of trying to find um, efficiencies within the um, within the organisation and within what we do. Now, clearly, we need to note that um, anything related to service cuts is, is not being suggested at this stage, and uh, would require special consultation, which we don't believe that we have time to do. Uh, and the second element is that there's been an email. I just want to check whether that's gone to everybody um, from there are a whole series of read amendments, which you will all see, but the most recent one was the one that Baz uh, Kaufman sent round, uh, probably within the last hour, I think. Uh, and that was just to clarify exactly who, which, which um, parts of the business sector would be eligible for the fourth quarter rebate. Has everybody seen that one? I see no, okay. Um, I don't know if Baz is online, so before I actually get into introducing it. Through you, Your Worship, I think I've got the note. I can share that screen. Uh, so if you look at, um, can everyone see number five? Yes, can so everyone see rates, that? Rates relief as amended uh, according to note A. Now open note A now. Uh, can anyone see note A? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. I will share that one. What about now? Do people want a moment to read that? Yes. Okay, right. We'll, we'll, we'll take a pause for a couple of minutes to allow everybody to read that. Is that the whole of it, uh, um, Cyrus? Yeah, that's the whole of it. Yeah, cool. Right. Okay. Thank you. Everybody clear? It's basically trying to make sure that it's well targeted to the, the, the businesses that most need it. Okay. Uh, and I've just had a text from our chief financial officer um, to say that uh, he needs to add something else to it. So, Andy, can you? Give us that advice, please. Yes, yes, I, yes I, I can. That, that, um, that, that amendment, amendment is, is the amendment, amendment I was referring, referring to. Uh, Could I just ask a question? Andrew, can we get Andy's Andy's uh, comments? Because and no doubt Andy will be the one who um, they, the questions need to be asked of anyway. Yeah, yeah cer certainly. Um, that was the amendment that I was referring, referring to. The, the change that's been, been made to reflect what can actually be practically implemented and giving more clarity than what was provided by the attempt to provide um, proportional relief to a certain sector. Instead, what we've done have been more specific about who is excluded and um, linking back to the central government initiatives as a way of providing criteria. And so what, so what is, uh, so are you just adding something to the, the criteria there, Andy? Yeah, we've simply taken out the reference to 75% and made it clear about who could apply and who couldn't. Right, okay. Right, I think there were a couple of questions of um, from a couple of councillors. Now, sorry, I've, I've now got, uh, Cyrus, I've got the screen that you've put up and now I've now completely lost okay. all the councillors. I will stop share now. Oh, that's better, thank you, much better. 
Nice to see you all. Right, I, I, right, who, I saw Malcolm's hand up and I think Nicola, you said you wanted to as well. So Malcolm first. Okay, the, the wording has disappeared now, but we talk about charging interest on deferrals. And my understanding is that, do we need to specify what percentage there? Because my understanding is that was going to be minimal, very low. So we need to clarify that whether there is going to be some at all. And if so, the perhaps a percentage so that people aren't too get um, into too much worry about how much it will be. Uh, certainly, that's it. Counting cost of funds. Which is currently less than 2%, is that correct, Andy? Uh, that's, that's correct, Councillor. Okay, so, so for half a year, it'd be about 1%. Well, it might be fractionally more than that, but but it'll, it'll, it'll be it'll be a council cost of funds. So happy to add to that to say at, at council cost of funds. Nicola, uh, so I'm just my understanding is that the churches are quite large owners of commercial property, and I just wonder whether they should be led to the list of excluded um, property owners along with utility companies, etc. Um. Churches are excluded from some rates already on the basis of the uh, right, uh, the classification. But that's only where they worship. I'm talking about their commercial properties. Uh, you're correct. They they do pay rates on those sorts. So I'm just wondering whether they should be added to the list of excluded owners. Well, it's likely that they wouldn't qualify because they wouldn't be gaining access to the financial support packages from the central government and their qualifying criteria. Okay, that's fine, thank you. Thank you. Right, that's all the questions of that. Thank you, right, now, I will go, now I'll introduce the paper. Um, councillors, this is a uh, certainly an unprecedented situation. Uh, the world is gripped by, um, I'm, I'm not sure that we kind of realise that to some degree living in, in New Zealand, uh, where we've been very much cushioned from the health impacts of this uh, virus but the world is certainly gripped by the, the most substantial uh, health um, epidemic uh, since the 1918 um, influenza epidemic. We've been largely uh, escaped the devastating health effects of that epidemic, um, which we've seen so tragically in so many countries uh, because of the quick action of our government uh, and its agencies, and also because of the great work that New Zealanders as a whole have done in keeping separate, staying safe and doing all the right things. And we have the chance to be able to stamp uh, that, this virus out and be able to get back to some semblance of normality, I hope sooner rather than later. Uh, certainly today's numbers show that the, um, the numbers of new infections were trending down. Now, why do I say that now? Because of course, uh, this virus is also having a dramatic impact on our economy. And this um, uh, paper in front of us is about our economy and about our people. It's, it's having a, a huge impact on businesses it's having a huge impact on employees. Many of people have lost jobs. Many people have had their hours cut back. Uh, and obviously it's having an impact also on welfare agencies, which are having to do more work. Um, so this is about our way of trying to do our little bit uh, to moderate the impacts on our community. So clearly the government is doing the biggest heavy lifting. They have resources which are so far ahead of uh, what any every council in the country has got. I think collectively we add up to about I think 11 or 12% of, um, of collective government spending. So government has got to do the heavy lifting because it is by far uh, the, the, it's the organisation that's got the resources to do that. But this is about us trying to reduce the devastating impacts on our economy, on businesses and on jobs. Uh, so this is our Wellington response. What can we do to soften the blow? And I want to start off just by saying thank you to Barbara and to all of her team uh, for the enormous amount of work uh, that they have done. I know they've worked very, very long hours First of all, to put the package together, which was presented to us last week, uh, and then to bring uh, the detail of this paper to us today. Uh, and I, I thank you, Barbara, and, and all of your team. And I see a here here going up. Um, so thank you very much for that. Uh, look, by way of background um, to this, before I go into what we're, what we're talking about today, um, we've also got to recognise that um, council is also a business. Uh, and council has a lot of business functions, and those functions have also been devastated by this um, by this virus. All of our recreation facilities are closed. All of our venues are closed. Uh, we are, you know, the chances that we get any dividend out of the airport, certainly for two years, um, is uh, is slim. 
Uh, and so we are expecting to lose something of the order potentially of up to $70 million. We don't know how much it'll be yet, but it's a huge impact on council's books. And also we need to reflect that uh, we, our current long-term plan uh, had essentially a 7% rates increase this year and next year and the year after and the year after. And that excluded doing anything to improve our water system. It excluded doing anything to sort out Let's Get Wellington moving. It excluded doing anything to fix Civic Square. And it certainly didn't contemplate a global pandemic. So we, we, need, we know that we need to do our rainy day bit to support our community. Uh, we also need to make sure that we don't cripple ourselves uh, for the following um, few years and our ability to do things on behalf of our community. So that's the background. There are three elements uh, to what we're doing at the moment or what we need to consider. First of all is the 2019-20, and that is the pandemic, pandemic package. It's what we do in using today's budget uh, or this year's budget. Uh, the second bit is going to be what we do uh, with respect to the annual plan for the 2020-21 year. And then also we need to give consideration to what we do going forward beyond that, the, the, the longer term, if you like. So the immediate uh, pandemic package, what we do now, um, the first bit of that and the most significant bit essentially is the 100% rates reduction, uh, or which is by way of deferral, uh, which is the, the June 1st, the, the rates which are payable on June 1st. So the proposal is here and you've seen it there to allow for those people who need it to be able to defer that rates uh, through to the 1st of December at a minimal around 1% or thereabouts impost in terms of um, in terms of the, the interest paid on that. Uh, they're also in that package, there are a lot of uh, fees, charges, um, which are to be frozen. Uh, we are, for example, the um, thing we've heard a lot from the, um, uh, from the hospitality community. I mean, they are being charged for things like liquor fees or licensing fees uh, while they're not able to trade. So those will all be frozen and they won't have to trade in those. Tra uh, they won't have to pay for that, that time, which they are unable to trade. Then we're also looking to give some guidance to officers as to how they work uh, to draft up annual plan papers. Now, obviously, they have to work with me because I have a responsibility to, to deliver that those papers to you. Uh, and that will be done uh, for our meeting on the 30th of April. Uh, and then, of course, we will then go out to consult. So what we, what we do today is not the annual plan. Uh, what we will do on the 30th of April is a draft annual plan, and then we'll consult on that annual uh, draft annual plan and then come back and make some decisions uh, in June. So we have yet to make those decisions. We also need to be thinking about how we best ensure that our economy recovers. And also about that, that really big question of whether the post-COVID world is going to be the same as the pre-COVID world. And I suspect most of us think it won't be. We know that there are some bits right up front which are not going to be the same. Uh, we know that, for example, international tourism is not going to recover for some time. Uh, it may be many years, uh, but we also, think that it's probably likely that many people will do their business differently and that will come down to that's why what we do now becomes really important. Uh, so for example we've had business uh, people who said you know this working from home is not too bad maybe I will work from home two or three days a week I might come into the office for the other three or two days a week. What does that mean if a lot of people do that of course it means there are a lot less people in our central city it means a lot less foot traffic supporting our retail community our hospitality community. So we need to be thinking about how we respond to that. It will undoubtedly affect the way in which people move around. We've heard a lot about making you know, various forms of transport more attractive, but it may be that some people's form of transport will be to walk from their bed to their, de to their, uh, their, their desk in their office uh, for some days a week. So we need to think that the world may be different. I guess the key thing that I'm trying to say there is that what we need to do is think about how we're going to attract people back into our city. And that is what a lot of the, uh, the pandemic package is about, trying to attract people back into our city when we're able to do so. Now, I think we need to actually stamp the virus out completely because if we are in some sort of state where people think that they are still likely to be exposed to catching the virus, I think we are going to find people very unwilling to get on a bus, to get on a train, to go to a restaurant, to go to a concert. So we have to get ourselves through that process. We've heard today about from some uh, industries which are absolutely devastated, they're unable to, um, they're unable to trade. The hospitality industry is one example of that. And that means a lot of jobs. Uh, I think Sarah Meekle said 20,000 jobs. That's a lot of students uh, and a lot of other people who are not students. But all of these things need to work together. So we need to get all of these things working together to create, again, some semblance of vibrancy back into our central city. 
I think some people, have, I've seen some, um, some comments made about there won't be any events. In fact, I was asked about that uh, the other day by, by somebody in the media. I, we've heard people say that there won't be any events or any activity happening for maybe the next couple of years. I said, well, who's, who was saying that? They said, well, some economists were saying that. And to me, they are no better able to make that judgment than we are or than anybody else. There have been health officials that have been much more interested. But quite clearly, you've heard today that there are uh, there is work being done to think about things which will draw people back into the city. Think about activities and events. Now, for example, I know, for example, the jazz, the jazz festival uh, is just one example uh, of saying, look, we know we're not going to be able to get the international performers, but we know that we can potentially do things with local performers which will attract people back into our hospitality industries and back into the, the, the spaces in the city. And that's the kind of thing that we need to do. Sarah Meikle was quite clear that they will be ready to go. And I'm sure that the, industry, that the hospitality and events industry as a whole will be looking forward to doing that as soon as they possibly can. Matt McLaughlin encouraged us to look creatively. And I guess my encouragement to you all, and I'm not quite sure uh, what, have, what amendments have ultimately ended up being in front of us or might be in front of us, uh, but let's not constrain the creativity of the industry, the creativity of our people, so I'm thinking of Wellington NZ, the creativity of our staff, and indeed our own creativity in deciding how we get life back into our central city. The final thing I wanted to say is our CBD is also the heart of the region. It's been the best central city in the country by a long shot for years. We've worked very, very hard to build it up. Now we've got to work hard to get it, that heart pumping back again, not just for Wellington and Wellingtonians, but for all of the Wellington region. So I'm pleased to, to move the uh, amendments and I know the Deputy Mayor is going to second them. Are you seconding, Sarah? I don't think you no, want to speak. I am, and I'm going to reserve my right to speak. Okay. Thanks. So, so um, councillors, what I thought we would do, I think there are a couple of amendments. Uh, well, I've seen one, I think. And if there's only, is there only one amendment? We'll just check that. There's two. Does there more than one? Yeah. There's Councillor Paul and Councillor uh, Conley. So there are two. Okay. Right. I think what we'll do is we'll get um, those amendments um, on the table first. So. Councillor Condi, if you want to move yours, and what we'll do is, if there are any questions of the uh, officers about support or otherwise for those um, amendments, then we'll deal with those, uh, because it'll be useful to know whether officers are in support, and if, if they're not, why not? Uh, and then we can move to debate those. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to move through them fairly quickly. Okay, Councillor Condi. Can I just ask, I thought there was a more up-to-date version of Councillor Condi's, um, um, the wording. Councillor Condi, you, you've got the words in front of you there. Is there something that's not right there? Um, so if you can clarify that when you, um, uh, before you, before you speak, please. I think correct it here if Councillor Condi, you think something's not accurate. Hi everyone, sorry, I'm just checking the latest text that I had through from Andy Matthews. Hi Andy. Um, I know 13 is different. 13 needs to change. Yeah, the, word, the wording is slightly revised in the latest version. Um, Could you circulate it's that? It's been emailed through. We'll, we'll, we'll try and get that circulated uh, right now. Thank you. Could you also copy me in that? Yeah. Uh, while we're waiting for that um, uh, amended version, um, Cyrus, you're going to be keeping the times? Uh, yes. Okay, so you will let people know when they've got, what, 30 seconds to go? Yeah. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Uh, actually, we, while, while this is being uh, typed up, that, uh, that will be a good idea. Um, I was, um, Councillor Fitzsimons, I see you've got your hand raised as well somewhere. Was that? Well, that was a actually a question which I've since taken offline. It was a while okay, ago. cool, that's fine, good. Okay, uh, Councillor Calvert. Yeah, um, I just want to ask officers, is it normal to take um, revenue um, and, ta and put it against a specific um, expenditure item or um, grant item? That's probably a question that, that I can best answer. Um, Thanks, no, no, it's, no, it's, no, it's not normal. I think what we were trying to reflect here um, is the fact that the and and what the what the council was trying to reflect in the amendment is that 
um, councillors potentially were looking at, at, at a couple of different choices here. One choice was that we would um, initiate um, parking changes um, at a later date. Um, what's been proposed, and, and that would result in uh, no parking revenue effectively for the period to the end of June. Um, and in the proposed scenario, um, the expectation is that the that parking um, fees come on come on quicker, and therefore there would be some revenue. And um, what was being proposed is that there that that an equivalent amount, right? And this is what's this is what's clarified in the uh, in the I think a little bit better in what has just been sent through now because uh, I'm sending it through as I'm speaking. Um, is that what, what clarifies it's, a, it's an equivalent amount um, of being um, allocated towards community grants. So it's not, a, it's, it's not a transfer of the money, it's an equivalent amount, which would be equivalent to the value um, of parking revenue that will be achieved by the, by the change being proposed. Thanks, are there any other? Yeah, so can I just, we, just re-clarify that? Just, on, I just, on, just in terms of the, um, so, because part of our plan and our budget is about recovering or making up for revenue that we've lost. So what we are, you know, when, I'm just making sure we're not double accounting here. So we are, we are saying we need to raise a certain amount of money because we're not getting revenue. And then on the other hand, with point of we're going to put it into somewhere else. So that's all. Yeah. Andy? Uh, oh, sorry. Point, hang of on. Order. Oh, point of order. Point of order. It's just that we're, um, we're asking questions before the um, amendment's actually even on the table. So yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. it's, a, it's an unusual process. Uh, Councillor Condi hasn't had a chance to speak to it yet. Yes. No, oh, I'm not, just, I was just trying to understand no, the Diane, Diane, Council, Council okay. Cowart. Councillor okay. Cowart. Councillor okay. Cowart, uh, look, uh, the, the point that Councillor Day makes is fair. The only thing was that I was trying to use the time while we were actually writing the, um, getting the right wording in front of us. So if we've got the right wording, then we will go to um, Councillor Condi introducing, uh, introducing the amendment. Just, have we got, have we got this, the right wording Mr. now, Mayors, uh, Do you have those now, Cyrus? Yeah, uh, I'll share the screen now. Thank you. If I can get this. Now this is going to be difficult for me to follow who's um, who has put their hand up to speak while we've got the amendment in front of um, us. So, um, so Councillor Fitzsimons, you will um, want to speak a second. Yep. Okay, got that right. And Councillor Sparrow, you wanted to ask a question, are you? When we get to that point. Yes. Okay. Cool. That. Thank you. Right. Okay. We've... Oh no, no, that's not this one. Sorry. Not there yet. So, councillors, the other thing is just to bear in mind you've got you've got the usual three minutes, um, and uh, there is the possibility of the usual one minute extension, uh, which we will see how we work through because we've got to get through this reasonably efficiently. Right. So we got that, Cyrus. No, not yet. Just uh, trying to get that. I've got a. So what I'll do is, is um, Councillor Condi, if you want to introduce, then I've got one question I'm aware of uh, that may or may not be answered in your introduction from Councillor Sparrow. And at that stage, then we'll go to Councillor Fitzsimons to second. Is the screen visible to everyone now? That's the screen. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Is that correct now, Councillor Condi? Um, I'm Andy Matthews is, is can that, you confirm that is, that that's is, the latest? That is the latest version, Councillor. Yes, that's Thank correct. Thank you so much. Okay, Councillor Condi and Cyrus, you're keeping time? Yep. Thank you. Right, where you go. Thank you. Um, so obviously we, we've talked a lot about business support and how this pandemic package is gonna, gonna support businesses, which I think is a wonderful thing. Um, and we've talked about cash flow support in terms of um, fee cuts and rebates and the quarter four rate deferral that we're looking at. One of these amendments adds to those um, fee cuts. So if you look please at amendment 
um, 16 on pavement license holders. And this was a direct response. Thank you to Maura who um, wrote into us and came to speak to us today about in public participation, requesting that these fees also be added to this. Um, I was able to follow that up with officers and, and this was able to be included. We're obviously also doing a lot of other business support activities um, that are that are in, in this package um, through Wellington NZ and 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 other things. And as the mayor said, it's really for us. It's about how do we revitalise our city centre so that businesses have customers, so that people are coming into our city centre again. And fundamentally, for me, you know, what brings people into the city is the energy and vibrancy of our city spaces, and that's really where a lot of the great part of this package is focused on how are we going to um, make people feel excited to come back into our city again and support, you know, the inspirational business owners that we've had talking about how excited they are to try and, and tackle this really immense challenge. Um, for me, one of the proposals here was about, um, you know, reducing fee parking charges. And as the parking portfolio leader, I, I felt um, strongly about bringing an amendment about that because for me, um, I just see free parking as a solution that's looking for a problem rather than something that's genuinely going to benefit our businesses at this time. And we know, for example, that when when we introduced weekend charging, there was no um, effect on retail revenues. We can't, our own um, council analysis couldn't find any effect on retail revenues when we did that. We also have other studies. The evidence shows that um, pedestrians and cyclists actually drive most of our retail sales rather than people who come in on their cars. Um, so th that kind of free parking, it's a very expensive initiative. So um, by, by removing that parking, we would be looking at being able to save a million dollars in this current financial year, which um, Amendment 3, 13 would look at putting into a community grants fund. And overall, we would then in the, in the future year save $4 million by not offering that free weekend parking, um, which given the, the really important um, you know, fiscal prudence and financial pressure that we're under, that's $4 million that we would not need to borrow to be able to fund some of our shortfalls. And so for me, at this stage, really, there's the high cost of free parking and every dollar really counts. And I don't wanna waste our money on something that's not actually gonna support businesses. It might be a grand gesture, but it's not actually gonna make that much difference to their ability to get back on their feet. Instead, what we're proposing here in amendment 15 is that officers look at investigating temporary P15 parking spaces around the city, which would allow people to come and pick up orders that they've made for, um, if they've made a call for delivery. And I will, I've, I've hit my three minutes on my timer. Um, can I have another minute, Mia, just to speak yes, yes, to 9A? Can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Thank you. Um, so just to speak to 9A quickly, um, to just say that, that this is basically saying that the 4.95% rate scenario includes that additional community funding that's in um, item 14. So that's why it's 4.95 rather than 4.8, because um, you'll be familiar with expecting to see 4.8, just to clarify that. Um, you know, I'm proposing that we should definitely take that, that the budget should be prepared on that basis, but that we should also offer um, our constituents the opportunity to consult on the 2.15 rate scenario that was offered. And in this case, I just really want to acknowledge that the officers did some really great work under enormous time pressure to bring us that zero rates option that is in the paper. And I really thank them for that work. And their advice has really convinced me that this is not a realistic option and that we should not be raising community expectations of this by consulting on it. So that's that's essentially the, the intention of that, is that we take um, the zero rates um, option off the table for the consultation document that we're looking at. And then the final one looks, final number 18 looks, uh, sorry, 17 looks at um, rates postponement, just to make sure that, that um, our policies fit for purpose for next year for people who may not be able to afford their rates. And Councillor Fitzsimons was going to speak further to the community grant funding and what that will be spent on as, as the seconder. Okay, thank you. Um, I think, uh, actually, Councillor Fitzsimons, it's probably useful if you do that because that will be helpful and then we can have questions of the um, uh, of the motion because you may well answer some of those questions. Cool. Um, well, kia ora everyone and I just want to as well um, join with others and thank officers for the huge amount of work which has gone into this package but also um, helping Councillor Condi and I frame and draft these amendments in a way that uh, achieves what we're seeking to achieve. Um, and really what we're seeking to achieve is to address the concerns that have been raised um, by councillors, um, by the community, uh, by businesses uh, and by residents about how we support the most vulnerable members of our community. 
And that's really about making sure that as part of this package, we direct additional funding into those frontline agencies who are on the ground, essential services, who are delivering uh, really, really important services uh, to the most vulnerable members of our community. Now, the amount that we've suggested is 1.5 over uh, this financial year and next financial year. And look, it's not um, an evidence-based amount. It's the amount that we thought that we would hopefully be able to get support from councillors around the table for. It's not a silver bullet, but it is the start of making sure that we can address the needs of the most vulnerable people. And really, um, there have been so many people express concerns about vulnerable Wellingtonians. I've heard, I don't know how many people I've heard say, look, I'll be all right, I'll be able to get through this, but I'm really worried about poor people. I'm really worried about homeless people. I'm already worried about, I'm really worried about people who are already marginalized. Um, and this really is a way of saying to groups like City Mission, DCM, Women's Refuge, those that work in sexual violence prevention and response, that we understand that the hurt and harm of this virus and the recession that will follow is most felt by the people who you deliver services to. So really it's about saying that, um, that, that free parking might deliver some small savings for uh, individuals, but this will collectively deliver some real change for a number of vulnerable communities. Um, and also, I just want to acknowledge that these people uh, who will benefit from this community grant funding are the people who have been working hard during the lockdown. So they are those working in those essential services who have been working day and night to support Wellingtonians and the residents uh, who we all have shown we're concerned about by, um, by the 10% uh, pay reduction, which has been agreed. I talked to Jenny Rains about this as somebody who is working on the front line for the city council about you know, how, how likely are we to be able to get this money to these groups uh, quickly enough. And she's confident that uh, we will be able to do that, um, that it will be able to fit in our grants rounds and that it will assist the people who are already marginalised um, and, and make sure that we, we're not contributing to them becoming even more marginalised. So really, um, I just want to uh, also finally mention the uh, number 18 there, which is about, um, and I just want to acknowledge uh, Councillor Wolf's leadership in this space as well. It's really about saying that in the sport and recreation centre, uh, a, a sector, there is a lot of hurt. The football season has been put off. We know that winter sport is going to suffer, but we also know that those sporting organisations are really going to suffer and we need them as a city are back on their feet, not least of all because they use our sporting facilities that we've invested in. So it's really about making sure that we're getting some targeted advice, uh, some specific advice about the targeted support that we can show uh, to the Sport and Recreation Centre and include that in our, our annual plan deliberations. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fitzsimons. Uh, now I just need to know if there are questions from anybody. I see Councillor Sparrow, you still have a question? No, it has been answered, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Because I've, I've got a couple. Anybody else? Uh, Councillor Rush. And Councillor Young. Oh, and Councillor Young, sorry. Hmm. Councillor Rush. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, I'm, I'm just a little bit confused by the wording of, I mean, first of all, fantastic work by the, um, by staff and executives, uh, thank you so much. And also Councillor Condi and Fitzsimons as well. Um, I'm just a little um, unsure how the uh, First Amendment, I think 13 is numbered, is to agree to return to full parking fees and enforcement two weeks after. Is that suggesting that there'll be a um, fees holiday for the first two weeks after? Because that's how it reads to me. Whereas I thought the intent was that we would agree to return to full parking fees as soon as possible after a return to COVID-19 level three, not two weeks. So if I, am I missing something? <clears throat> well, do you want me to can't clarify that, Mayor? Yes, go for it. So the, um, at, at the moment, there is some, there's some equi uh, work to the parking equipment that will be required um, once we get to a point where um, contractors and, and parking staff can return to work. That's a two week. Uh, that's a two week period that we've allowed for that. That's why there's a, a variation to that time. Good eye. Okay, thanks, Councillor Young. Um, so, 
Um, so I've got no problem about reintroducing the parking charges, but I am concerned about ring fencing it this way, directing where it should go. I feel that that's not right. And I mean, I could vote for the first, but I couldn't vote for the be allocated to community grants. So, um, I mean, I'm just wondering whether they could be split into two things. And then I'll just go on with my other things, so I'll do it all in one go. Uh, and then I'm, I'm concerned about increasing the community grant funding when people will be struggling to pay their rates. I mean, people have been, I think we're going to have a 17.5% unemployment rate, for example. And I just think, so I'm concerned about talking so, about the most yeah, vulnerable question. people. So question. the question is, uh, I, I, how can we... Um, the question is over the definition of vulnerable, because I think we're ignoring the hidden vulnerable, which are the people who are, are not the obvious ones, but people who are struggling mm -hmm. to pay things. And I think we're taking some assumptions in here. Uh, and then my next question is um, about the P15 parking spaces, because that will involve quite a lot of cost of signage, and which I would have thought is, is a complete waste of money, bearing in mind there'll be plenty right. of space around the city. So it's, has anyone done any work on the cost of signage? Um, our office is going to give us some advice on that. Um, those, Mayor, those, those things. Mayor, we haven't done any detailed work, but I don't think it's um, a significant cost. Mm, okay. Yeah. And then and then the last one is uh, the targeted support to the sport and recreation sector, because I would have thought the art sector is also a very vulnerable sector. They use our venues uh, when they're open. And I'm just concerned that we're just looking at sport and recreation why we didn't include, why arts weren't included. Could arts be included? Yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Councillors, can I just ask if there is anybody who would object to including <laughs> um, the arts, sport and recreation sector? I, see no I need it to be included in the grants, Nicola. Okay, I, I, okay I see no objection to that. Okay. Um, look, uh, some questions from me. First one of them is um, the ration, it's probably a, a rationale um, around alert level three, because I will look at Obviously, as a nation, we're trying to defi define what all these things mean. But alert level three, to me, looks as though there's a whole bunch of places still closed. So we will be going back under this uh, to full parking fees, et cetera, while we have libraries, museums, pools, cinemas, food courts, gyms, et cetera. I'm presuming most of the shopping still closed. Is that, am I reading that right, officers? Um, originally, it was, originally it, was, it was alert level two. Yes, Mayor, there is a reason for that proposal, and I'll ask Andy Matthews to explain because it has to do with the um, the ability to um, yeah. So identify revenue. Yeah. So as I so as I said earlier, there's a there's at the moment the assumption that we've that we've been asked to model. Um, this is this is a obviously an, an amendment coming from councillors, not from officers. So I'm I'm just explaining it. Um, that that what we've been asked to do is look at uh, the timing of, of introduction. Obviously, it's it's largely impacted by uncertainties at the moment around what may or may not happen. Um, but the assumption at the moment is with once once two weeks of level um, of level three were in place, we return to full fees, and from that stage, we expect that we would get. Um, we would be looking at around 50% occupancy at that stage at level three. So we've so it's full fees, but we've we've made some assumptions in there around occupancy. And so we've reduced the, the fee levels that we would be receiving accordingly from that from that point through to through to June. Um, and as you say, they they are at the moment we've just had to make a set of assumptions around that. Um, and and we'll be having to look at that as that as things progress with um with changes in um level status. But it was it was deliberate to be level three, not level two, because level it was level two originally in what I first saw, but um it's now level three, which is quite different in terms of what's open and what's closed. That's correct. Okay. Would um, would I the, would you mind me quickly speaking to that? Yes, uh, yes, actually, if you, if you could explain the meaning of the motion, I suppose that's the way I'll ask it. Yes, thank okay, you, thank you. Um, So the intention was that we wanted to move back to normal charging resume as soon as enforcement was possible. So um, that, that was essentially, there's no point in charging. We can't charge when we're at level four because enforcement isn't possible. Our parking officers can't go out. So the intention was that we would go back to a normal charging regime as soon as enforcement was possible. Okay, no, thank you for that. Um, second question was um, on 14, they agree to fund an additional uh, 500k. 
presumably that should be agreed subject to the annual plan process because we haven't actually gone through our annual plan process yet. We are, haven't actually even got the draft in front of us. And that would be our normal process, would it not, um, Andy? Uh, Mayor, to, to word it appropriately, that. yeah. Um, I, I think we, our assumption is, is all of the instructions you give us today are um, for the preparation of the draft annual plan proposal, which you will you will debate um, and approve before it, it goes out for public consultation. So, are, are councillors happy that we just say that's agree, agree to ask um, officers to include that in the draft annual plan? Well, because otherwise, otherwise you are essentially saying it's predetermined. Can I just um, suggest that we don't that you don't try and debate our amendment? Like, I'm I'm I'm, I'm just asking for officer it's a bit advice. Tricky. No, I'm asking yeah. for officer advice. Um, because yeah, normally, officer normally advice. we're very careful about how we word these things because it's subject. We got to officer advice to wording it to be to be very careful. So really, you either Thank agree you with it or you don't. Simon. Thank you, Council for Simon. Uh, and the last one was 16. I just wanted to know: was that I thought we'd already included that proposition in the in the package, but I may be wrong. Hmm. Um, Mayor, we didn't we did intend to, but on checking our wording, it wasn't clear. So this gives it. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, cool. Uh, and do these recommendations have officer support, either all, all or in part? Uh, yes, we, we have worked with the councillors to um, word these um, amendments as they stand here. Okay, thank you. Mayor Foster, you. can I just raise a really important point? I don't think we should be asking for officer advice at every point. Um, they have had the chance to, to, you know, to say whether they agree or thank not. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. So I, um, I disagree with that. No, thank you. Uh, no, it's, it is not unusual for councillors to be able to ask questions of officers of amendments as to whether they support them or not. That's, that's a pretty usual process. Okay, councillors, um, speaking to the amendment. Um, could I just quickly address there because there were a couple of questions around wording that I'd be quite happy to incorporate at this point. Would that be the appropriate time to? Oh, look, if you can help us, that would be useful. Thank you. Okay, so um, Councillor uh, Young asked if we could split 13 into yes. two parts. Yes. Um, Cyrus, I'm comfortable with that. Is the meeting comfortable with splitting the two parts? I don't see anybody, well, not that I can see everybody at the moment, but <laughs> I don't see anybody being too concerned by that. If there is, please raise a hand. Deputy uh, Councillor Free, you raised a hand for some purpose. Uh, yeah. If we... You've been muted, Councillor Deputy Mayor Free. Yeah. So um, my question actually wasn't about oh, was that. It was, a, it was, was about yeah. it was about nine A. Okay. And Look, hang on, hang on. I just deal. I just yeah. deal with. I uh, just deal with uh, Councillor Conti. Just dealing with a couple of things first. Yeah. So was there any objection to splitting 13? <laughs> I don't Does see any. So that, a, that will have to be tweaked. Okay. Now, if, 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 if everybody's happy with that, we can do that. Um, excuse me, the other you, one, probably, um, you probably oh, can't sorry. see my ha um, hand going up, Andy. I'm trying to... No, the screen's not coming up to show... Um, are you, um, is that... You're, you're objecting to splitting them, are you? Well, I just want to be clear about what... Are, okay, when you say okay. split, what it does actually look like? Yeah, well, we will have to work that one out, won't we? Um, so are you objecting to splitting it? Because if you are objecting to splitting it, it can't be done, except by way of amendment. Um, well, I just can't understand how it's going to work. So what, we, what we're going to say is we're going to agree to, to return to full parking fees within two weeks of level three, and then we're going to say what? Equivalent of parking revenue proceeds up to $1 million. So, um, yeah. Are you, object, are you objecting to it? Uh, probably objecting to both, actually. Okay, so, okay, so it can only be dealt with by way of amendment. Um, uh, Councillor Condi, um, what was the other one you wanted to, to deal with? Um, the other one was that with um, 14, if you wanted to put, um, you know, agree to include at the draft annual plan, I'm comfortable yep. with that. If people are happy with that? No. Okay. No, so there's an objection Then let's to that. leave it stand. That's, un that's unfortunate because I would have agreed with it otherwise. <laughs> um, uh, Deputy Mayor Free, you had a question. Yeah, my question was really about 9A, so that if we do agree with that, we're going out with two rate scenarios rather than just the one as officers have suggested. I guess I just want to know how much extra work that is for officers in this quite difficult situation. Officers, can you tell us how you would interpret that? Is it, does it basically mean you've got to do two, two different sets of things or it's a relatively modest piece of work? 
Um, Mayor, this, this, is, this is fine because we were anticipating that you might ask us to go out with more than one scenario. Um, okay, thank you. So I, I, I think though um, it would be helpful if, if we, we are clear about um, perhaps which is a preferred one, but that's for the council to determine. So that will be for the 30th, yep. Okay, right. Okay, speaking to the amendments. Now I can only see some of you, so um, let's see what we can do here to try and get everybody back on. Right, um, officers, can you help me also? Oh, there we go. Right, who's speaking to the amendments? That Deputy Mayor Free, you're first up. Mm. Is there any, anybody else yeah. wish to speak to the amendments? Look, um, I'm um, actually, I'm, I'm comfortable with what I saw of most of the amendments, actually. Um, I'm happy to support them, except that I, I don't support myself. I may be in a minority view, but I don't actually support going out with two options. I think um, I'm actually quite comfortable with us going out with 4.95. I think that's quite a good balance with us clearly having shown that we've, um, that we've taken heed of the concerns around a nine two figure or a 7.1 figure even and that we've almost halved what we were planning to do but I also think we are going out wanting to support our communities and we could really be challenged on how we plan to do that and only ask for a 2.1 percent how we plan to target relief while not having the um, cash reserves to do it and, and how we think it's okay to actually borrow um, to do that to the extent that we'd have to and load up rates for future years and for future generations so I, I actually want to go out with a clear signal about 4.95. That's my own view. I won't be supporting that one, but I'll be probably supporting the others. I want to hear what other people have to say as well. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, Councillor Coward. Yeah. Um, look, I'm not going to um, support these amendments. I think they've come rather late, and I think it's... You know, look, we spent half an hour talking about parking fees and parking. We've got to be agile and flexible. And I think we're trying to push ourselves into a corner here. Um, what we should have been doing is looking for a little bit of flexibility over the next couple of months. We've never been in a COVID-19 situation before. We've never understood what it means to come from level four to level three to level two and maybe back again. And I think we're just trying to tie ourselves up in knots. We should be allowing some flexibility. I'm sure we could have worked through some um, amendments to enable that. Um, if we want to give more money to community grants, well, just, just, let's just discuss that rather than trying to tie it up with a, a parking policy. Um, I think that's really the, the points I want to make. I just think this is just spending half an hour talking about this when we've got some really big stuff to, um, to get onto. So look, I'm not gonna support these amendments because I think they're just tying our city up in knots again. Councillor Sparrow. Uh, just sorting myself out. Um, I have a concern or query, if you like, about the amendment talking about returning or once we return to level three, reinstating parking fees at that stage. Originally, we were talking about level two, and I think the purpose of the exercise was to provide some relief or support, whatever, for business people. And some of those who participated earlier were talking about their, their support for free parking for a little while. So if we're talking about level three, that means we're going to start charging again somewhat more quickly than if we were talking about level two. So just a little bit of concern in that regard. Thank you, Councillor O'Neill. Um, yeah, yeah, I will I will be supporting both of these amendments. I, I think it's really important that we make sure um, we're following the principles of Tia Takura and our, our climate um, framework. We're looking for opportunities to, to move forward in this space and, and so that paid parking is really important as well. Um, just like to, to touch on a, a point that Fleur mentioned earlier, this, this crisis is, um, is and will continue to be affecting the most vulnerable in our city. So I also really strongly support um, uh, the direction of that funding into core community services as well. So yeah, I'll keep it brief, but I will be supporting both amendments. I think it's really important. Uh, so is that your hand up there, Councillor Foon? Yep, and then Councillor Wolf. And then Councillor Day. 
Councillor Foon. Kia ora tato. Um, thank you to all for doing the work to get us this far to talk about these issues. Um, I just want to talk about the um, vitality and the rejuvenation of our city. And um, at the moment, we are seeing families moving around together on bikes and walking. And, and I actually really want to see this continue in the middle of our city. And cars are not the way that we're going to get people back into the city to really enjoy what our beautiful town has to offer. So I'm, I'm all up for, for keeping the um, parking fees there so that we can regenerate our city and make it a, the great livable, livable place we want it to be. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Foon. Nice to the point. Uh, Councillor Wolf. Yeah, thank you all. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Are you, are you getting this through? Yes. Yeah, OK. Um, so I said earlier to you all, you know, I felt that this paper had adequate um, flexibility. I think that most of the um, amendments relate to our annual plan and the decisions that we make there and, and particularly that we're going to go out and consult. Um, I, I think that um, we we have been dealing with, um, in, in some ways, um, in the weeds, and I'm, I'm sorry to be blunt, but um, the, what we're dealing with at the moment is, is our package um, that we're, we're wanting to go out to the to the community in, in relation to our pandemic response and i think really we should be concentrating on that and m then moving forward with with the annual plan and seeing if we can um be more efficient and more effective in, in bringing that 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 annual plan to fruition um just at the moment i think that the officers have done remarkably well in, in, a, in a short space of time and so have we um, yeah, we've we've really thought about things very very carefully, but I, I do believe that, that there are more cost efficiencies that that we can make um, in, in the future. I I I believe that the um, the recommendation of the the um, 4.9 um, rates increase is is not a, as ambitious as what it should be, and that's why I'm, I am going to support Councillor Condi's. Um, lesser rate so that we can actually do some work and have some comparisons laid out for us and 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 um get involved with with consulting to with with our community um now's not the time to panic now's the time to be calm and, and let's just move forward with this thank you councillor uh wolf councillor day um, I'd like to begin by just uh, really acknowledging the, um, the hard work of our officers. It's had to be, this has had to be produced in a very short period of time and they've worked hard to um, gather the feedback of community and councillors. So I want to acknowledge and thank them for that. And I'd like to acknowledge Councillor Condi and Councillor Fitzsimons for their work producing these amendments, which I think are really important. Um, people are saying that, um, that you know, we need to focus on the response, the um, pandemic response package. Parking is in that package. Yes, it does fall, now fall into our annual plan as well, but it is in the package, so we do need to respond to it now. Um, we know that um, that parking doesn't um, directly uh, benefit business. We've seen the, the reports on that. And so we need to look at ways that we can directly inject money into businesses by giving parking away as a free thing. It actually benefits people who aren't necessarily going to the businesses. In a city residence, we know that when parking in the weekend was free, in a city residence, we were using that parking and it wasn't always available to the people who wanted to go to the businesses. So I believe, as um, was said before by Councillor Condi, I think actually it may, may not have been Councillor Condi, but people who are on bikes and walking, um, they, they do spend more money um, in, in our city. So we need to support that. Um, to Councillor Young, um, you spoke about the hidden vulnerable, and that's actually why I think this grant package is really important, because our vulnerable community at the moment is growing, and we can't, we, we absolutely know that we're hearing that through um, through reports daily, that, um, that more people are finding this really hard, and this package means that our services that deliver to the city can deliver to more people, which is really important. Um, and I, that's why I also really um, want to acknowledge um, number 17, that actually looking at opportunities for rates postponement and how we can make that better does also reach out to people who maybe haven't lost their jobs. But you know, things are going to get expensive for people over the next wee while. So they need to um, we need to make sure that there are ways that people can um, access all the support they can. And they may maybe don't um, highlight flags for us because they've lost a job, but they may be finding it, it hard. And I'm thinking of people on fixed incomes um, such as elderly, then we need to look at all the possible ways we can 
to help those people. Um, and I'm re it's really important that we, we make sure that our, our package is, um, is ongoing and that we are constantly listening to the community and responding. And I feel really grateful um, to um, Barbara, our CE, and officers who have been communicating very clearly with us that this is not a final package. And I think it's really important we acknowledge the work that they're doing and will do to continue to respond to our community. So um, I'd just like to also acknowledge that um, it's really important when we're talking about our parking policy at the moment that we're not passing um, things that actually are in contradiction to our parking policy and se And it's really important that we do show leadership and strength there's always an excuse as to why to push it down the road to discuss it later, but we are discussing it now because it's in the package and I really want to deal with this. So thank you very much and I hope people will support these amendments. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Councillor Rush. Uh, so thanks very much. As I uh, mentioned earlier, um, I'm going to support all these amendments. They're not perfect, but I think they strike a right balance between um, ensuring that our most vulnerable are, are being looked after uh, by the City Council uh, and also providing um, some robust balance sheet for, uh, for the recovery. Uh, just on parking, um, I did do a, a, a look at this in detail. I, I pulled up some literature and I would also like to thank Mark Johnson as well for some material he sent through to me, the very kind message of thanks, by the way. And in reality, if we want to help the most vulnerable, um, then we need to take money from somewhere. And, and I just felt that uh, the, the, the evidence is that the uh, parking fees will not change shopping habits. And as a consequence, um, the, the sensible thing to do was to continue with parking fees as soon as we can get them back on and, and to, to deploy that cash to, to more vulnerable uh, sectors. And I'm very comfortable that it's uh, all wrapped up in, in the one paragraph. Um, I think that sends the right message. So I'll be supporting these. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Okay, it's Councillor Matthews, Councillor Paul. Koto, um, I'd just like to um, back up the comments that I've heard um, from Councillor Rush about the, the evidence on parking, um, that when we had this discussion, I asked for officers, was there any advice that they could give us that this actually would make a material difference to our retail sector? And the, the response was that no, it was about optics and perception. And I agree. Um, with uh, Councillor Condi's comments that it's a very expensive uh, decision to make on optics and perception. Um, I, uh, the, definitely the focus in these amendments on, on shifting some of that resource to help our most vulnerable people. Um, I think that at resulting from this pandemic, there will be people, there'll be some in our community who actually are still fine. And I would ask of those people that when we are able to, that they, you know, go into town or go into their local community, um, visit their local cafe or restaurant, do a bit of shopping, and however they got there, whether it was, you know, on, on their bike or on public transport or walking or, or using their car, that they see um, the contribution that they're making to, to pay for their own parking is, is part of what goes into the greater good of our city. And that, that is something, you know, a small thing to add to those kind of costs when you're out shopping or, um, or you know, going out to dinner that is actually being able to be put uh, very explicitly in this case to the greater good and to look after some of those people who are going to be doing it a lot more tough under these circumstances. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Paul. Uh, kia ora koutou. Um, no surprises that I am supporting this amendment, especially around the parking. Don't need to go into that. We all know I've got the climate change portfolio. Um, I just wanted to touch briefly on the community grants aspect of this. Um, over the last, uh, ever, ever since lockdown, um, I've been a part of the Wellington Student Volunteer Army and helping out um, our vulnerable people, you know, on the ground and actually seeing what that need is. And I think as well as supporting our frontline services, this is going to allow, um, you know, for the arts, sport and rec. And that's really critical in terms of mental health because I can see it declining, um, not only in my own groups of people that I'm around, but also in the communities I'm involved 
involved in it and in the people asking for support. So 100% support. And I think in terms of getting people back into the CBD, this is a good first step. People are going to be apprehensive about um, going back into the outside world when this lockdown eases. You know, giving them opportunity to step into their communities first and then the confidence to step into the CBD and towards our businesses, I think is really critical. So thank you, Jenny, for your work. And I know you worked really hard to make sure that we considered other ways to support businesses um, whilst taking away this, um, uh, whilst removing this particular part of the package. So thank you. And thank you to officers for, the, um, for their work as well. Anyone else? I, I'll say a few things because there's bits of this I'll support and bits of it that I won't. Um, for me, I think the issue, and that's why I asked the question about the level two, um, I think level two is, uh, sorry, level level two and level three. I think level three is too early because you look at what level three uh, says, uh, and it says that we um, are in a situation where there are uh, heightened risk that the disease is not contained, community transmission occurring or multiple clusters breaking out. And there's a whole range of different things that uh, will happen. And that includes closing essentially all public venues. So libraries, museums, cinemas, food courts, gyms, pools, amusement parks, et cetera. My question really is at the point, this is, this is being driven by enforcement. So yes, we could enforce it. The question is what's gonna draw people back into the city at that point in time? And the answer is probably not a lot because there won't be a lot to draw them there because most things will not be open. So it would make much more sense if, I mean, the whole idea of actually putting this to the officer's idea in the first place, and I don't quite buy that. I mean, it's, it's economically irrational to suggest that making something cheaper is um, disincentive uh, or, or doesn't incentivize people to use it. Um, the whole idea of doing this was to try and encourage people to come into the city when there was very little to draw them in or when businesses and when activity was really struggling. Now, clearly when you're in a situation where we're at level three, um, business will not be merely struggling. Most of it won't be happening at all because most of it will not be allowed to happen. Uh, and that's why I think it's too early. I think if you'd said uh, some point in time after level two, I would have been able to go, yep, that makes some sense. But at level three, we still will not have a functioning economy in the central city. And so therefore for me, it's driven more by enforcement and by money. And funnily enough, that's exactly what happened when we first imposed uh, a lot of these charges in the first place. They were driven not by logic, uh, or by any other, anything else, but by money and by council's desire to make more money. Uh, so I'm concerned with that. I don't particularly care for the the link, unfortunately, because I don't mind necessarily the, the supporting welfare um, uh, there. That's a good thing. Uh, and if there are, if there are needs which we can see, that's a good thing. But unfortunately, having put the two together, that becomes a bit of a problem. Um, and some of the ones at the end, I think, to clarify some of the uh, the issues around the pavement um, thing, I will support that. Uh, and I can't see all the rest of the amendments, but I think the ones around arts, um, arts and sport and recreation, I'm happy with too. But the one I have difficulty with is the first one. Councillor Condi, right of reply. Okay, thank you everyone for that discussion. I've got a few items. Um, I wanted to just confirm that the intention of, of the amendment 9A um, where it says that it would be prepared based on the 4.95 rate scenario. Um, the, the notion there, coming back to um, Barbara's point, question about which was preferred, the notion there is that the, the line item budget that would appear in the back of the consultation document would be pr prepared on the basis of the 4.95% increase and that the 2.15% option would be included in the text as an alternative option for us to get consultation on. So hopefully that provides some clarity. Um, you know, one of the points around what we're trying to do with the, the community grants in 2019 and 2020 with around the parking fees is that this is about providing immediate relief prior to an annual plan. So we want to be able to get some funding out, out, a lot more funding out to these community groups prior to the annual plan, which won't come online until June. So that's really a lot of that motivation. I just wanted to, to also agree with the notion around people, several people have spoken about the hidden vulnerable and I, I and mental health, which have, as you know, someone living, I live with a mental health condition, so it's an issue close to my heart. And that as people deal with unemployment and the stress of the lockdown and all of these other things, our communities and, and people are under enormous stress. So I'm also just wanted to note that that's a, that's a set of organizations that, that could use our help. And I think our communities will need in the coming weeks and months. Um, I, I wanted to thank Councillor Rodge for saying that he felt that these amendments struck a good balance between the support for the vulnerable and being financially responsible. I felt that it was about the best compliment that I could receive for what I was trying to, to accomplish by putting these settings together. So thank you very much for saying that. Um, 
uh, Mayor Foster, just acknowledging your your point about level three, I think. Um, at level three, if those if many of our businesses aren't open, then it won't make any difference to them whether the parking is free or not. So it doesn't actually it's not actually going to make much effect on on businesses from that point of view. And that the the um, officers have included in this modelling that the fact that they expect occupancy during that time to be very low, which I think is what we would all expect during that time. So that's that's kind of the justification around around that uh, keeping it for level three. And that's all I have to say. Apart from thanking everyone for a really robust and um, good conversation. Okay, um, thank you. Um, now, uh, does anybody want anything taken separately? You can raise a hand to say you want something taken separately. Okay, we've got councillor, well, hopefully we'll um, understand which one's the one. Actually, should we just take the whole lot separately? Or is it just the first one? It's 9A for me, please. Okay, okay, so we want, I think we'll take them all separately. Okay, um, now, Cyrus, um, you are going to need to help me through this because um, yep. I think we probably all need to see the amendment in front of us, do we? Yeah, I will share the screen again. Okay, so if you share the screen, and then I'll ask people to, now is somebody able to look at what councillors are doing in terms of raising hands, uh, so we actually know who's voted on which one? Somebody able to do that? Yes, I'll be keeping a track of that. Okay, thanks, thanks, Sean. Right, okay. Could you use the thumb. The only problem with the, th the only problem with the thumb is that if you're looking at, the, if you've got the screen with the amendment there, it's actually very difficult to see the, th the thumbs. Okay, so Sean, you're going to be able to cover that. Right, I'll put 13 first. Sorry, we're not splitting 13. Sorry? No, we're, we... not split... no, we're not splitting 13. There was an objection to that. So 13 has to stay as it is. Okay. So um, can you see hands when they're raised uh, on screens there, there Sean? Um, I can do, yes, when we... I've got okay, so you want to, you're, you're, we're raising physical hands as opposed to blue hands, aren't we? Is that right? Um, yes. Okay, right. So 13, those in favour of the amendment, please raise a hand. I'm assuming that all the hands have gone up that are, that are supporting that. Those against, please raise a hand. Sean, have you got everybody? Just give me one moment. Can those uh, voting against just keep their hands raised for a second? Uh, Young, Sparrow, Foster, Calvert, and Wolf against, which means a majority of 10 um, voted in favour of the amendment of that clause. Sorry, who, who, is the, who is against? Just to clarify that one. Um, Foster, Calvert, Sparrow, Wolf, and Young. Okay, cool. my okay. so that's, that's passed. Um, 14, do the same thing. It's, it's wonderful invisible voting, isn't it? Um, 14, those in favour, please raise a hand. Those against, please raise a hand. So I have Foster, Wolf, Young and Calvert against. Okay, so that's past 11-4. Uh, 15. Those in favour, please raise a hand. Those against, please raise a hand. That one's carried unanimously. Okay, good, thank you. 16, those in favour, please raise a hand. Those against, please raise a hand. Uh, so, I think that's nobody against, so that one looks unanimous as well. Okay, thank you. At 9A, those in favour, please raise a hand. And those against, please raise a hand. I have Deputy Mayor and Councillor Calvert against. Okay, thank you. That's carried 13-2. Uh, 17, those in favour, please raise a hand. Those against, please raise a hand. Um, that one is carried unanimously. Okay, and 18. Those in favour, please raise a hand. 
And those against, please raise a hand. That one's carried unanimously as well. Thank you, thank you. Okay, we'll go back to the the uh, screen so we we'll, we'll get that amendment off the off the screen. Right. Okay. Right. That deals with one amendment, and well done. It's it's uh, it's interesting. It's like uh, you're still voting as though it were with machines because you still don't know which which way anybody's voting. Right. Other amendments. I gather there is is there just just to check is there just one other amendment? Uh, there's. Two more, I think Councillor Roche also has an amendment. Councillor Roche, is that correct? Right, okay, I will have a look at that one in a moment. Councillor yeah, Paul. Councillor Paul's first, yes. Okay, Councillor Paul. Excuse, excuse me, Mayor Foster, can I just request that we have a um, five minute break to go to the toilet just because it's been two hours? Yeah, that's probably reasonable. Yeah, otherwise I'd keep on going, wouldn't I? Yeah, okay, look, we um, can we, can we uh, officers, can you blank the screen uh, and we'll come back at four o'clock on the dot? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to everybody listening.
presuming that the people who are not yet um, on video are not yet back with us. No, I am, but uh, the host turned me off, so I can't turn myself back on. Ah. Yeah, me too. Oh, okay, right, so we read it again. I think... Uh... Uh, Councillor Sparrow, you there? Councillor, yes, Councillor Foon? Yep. Yes, I'm here. Yep. Councillor Wolf. Not yet, Councillor Condy. Yep, there. Uh, Councillor Fitzsimons, you said you were there. Councillor Wolf, are you there? Andy, yes. can I just okay. say right. that okay. Yeah. Okay. it would be great if we could finish by half past four because some of us have got a meeting scheduled with um, Greater Wellington councillors. It may or yeah. may not be possible, but it would be great. I agree. I think we would all... Um, what have you done now? Uh, Sarah, I did text Thomas about that, just letting him know that we were running over time. Yep. Okay, councillors, it is in your hands. Um, uh, you know, if um, if we can get through efficiently, that would be good. Councillor Tamitha, Paul. Councillor Paul. <laughs> kia ora. Um, kia ora yeah. koutou. Um, kia ora to all uh, tuning in from their bubble. And thank you, Mia Foster, um, for... Um, this and thank you to my colleagues who I've worked with uh, across the political spectrum on this amendment and a special thanks to officers as always for the amazing work that they've done. So I'm, I'm moving this amendment um, which in essence is around ensuring that every dollar we spend is best placed to support our local economy right now. Um, so we've been presented as part of this package a proposal for an $8 million fund. Um, what I'm proposing here is that we gear this up to address the need to restore business confidence, allow headroom to adapt to new ways of working and delivering services and to create jobs and of course revitalise. Uh, we are about to hit a recession where the need will be in the range of 50% of GDP. We simply do not have enough money to save absolutely everybody, but that doesn't mean we should just throw our money into a vacuum. We need to be surgically precise with any funding that we have access to. This fund is an excellent starting place to drive this and we can actually continue to do, uh, continue to provide that targeted support through our annual and long-term plan processes. Um, what I'm proposing isn't complex. I'm asking that we broaden the criteria on the fund to provide targeted support in four ways as part of four amendments. So the first um, is around allowing businesses, uh, oh sorry, as part of the, my first amendment that has four particular, um, sorry not first amendment, first part of my amendment, so part A, that's around broadening um, the criteria and removing some of that red tape. So um, the, sorry, just looking at this um, amendment. So around operating um, expenses, we know that many businesses will have to reconfigure, um, which might require changes to operational structure. So we think remove that. Um, removing the additional council funding. So making it possible for people to apply to this and other council funds, such as the grants pools where, you know, social enterprises and the like can demonstrate um, social benefits. Um, we should allow for startups. These are the people that are, that are going to help our um, industries like hospitality, retail, um, to actually look at the way that they provide that customer service delivery and how they can integrate contactless service and um, delivery services and all of these things. Um, and, you know, we, we've been reliant on Zoom and, and Microsoft Teams and many of these concepts are ones born out of startups. So I think it's critical that we um, include them in that criteria. And finally, on part A, um, just removing the barriers around matching applicant investment. So that's pretty much just saying, look, um, you don't have to match 50% of this funding with, um, with investment funds. Um, and that shouldn't be a deterrent to people being able to um, access this funding so long as they can demonstrate viability. Um, I guess the main, the, the main purpose behind my amendments are around steering revitalization and job creation through technology and innovation. Uh, we heard from um, uh, um, Maura, um, I think her name's pronounced that way, uh, and Matt around technology and innovation. They both explicitly mentioned this. In the last funding round for um, the City Growth Fund, um, it was equal parts given to tourism, sport, innovation, and arts and culture. So what I'm asking here is that we actually refine this purpose to be around innovation to allow businesses to explore um, these elements. So it does it does remain as is. It just has that um, particular steer in a useful area. Um, I don't think it's useful or helpful duplicating the tourism aspects that this fund has um, provided for in the sense that Wellington NZ, that's a lot of their um, job role there. And we do give them money to foster those 
um, tourism elements and, and around sports, you know, we've just given 1.5 million around that. So I understand that that can have different purposes at a commercial level, but just trying to refine that and be as surgically precise as possible. Um, going to wrap up. So um, essentially, we're looking at technology and innovation. We want to be able to ensure that businesses can operate no matter what the alert levels are and that they um, and that people proposing these ideas are able to fund um, these initiatives. Um, I have had feedback from a range of different people, business owners and economists and thinkers of the like. And this is really about them being able to indicate to their investors that there is money circulating in the local um, economy and in that space. And they can demonstrate that um, through showing that there is funding that is targeted around that. Um, and, you know, this isn't this fund isn't was never proposed as the the silver bullet or the the answer to the struggles that businesses are having but i think it's just about tailoring that response so i'm keen to hear your feedback and yeah far away thank you and seconded by um councillor panett councillor panett do you wish to speak and then we'll ask any questions of officers yeah, I'd like to speak. Um, first of all, I would also like to give my thanks to officers for the work um, that they have done on this package and um, also, of course, to my colleagues. Um, I appreciate that. Um, look, I think this is a time where we do need bold leadership and um, this is a time where we also need government involvement. Um, the private sector will not be able to carry the fallout from this terrible virus. Um, and so um, government needs to play a very strong role uh, locally and centrally. Um, Councillor Paul, it's been great to work with you on this and um, with other colleagues as well. Um, so I guess I would just like to um, particularly uh, refer to the fact that um, when we think about innovation, we think about whether uh, past experience actually served us well that our economy and our society has probably permanently changed as a result of this virus. We have uh, new threats and, and ongoing threats to our economy from climate change, from earthquakes, from inequality. And this fund can be used um, to think about the world in quite a different way. Donut economics I'm just reading about in the Netherlands. People are looking at different approaches um, as we um, work towards um, out, out of this crisis. Um, I'd just like to make the point, the, uh, the fine people at Wellington, uh, New Zealand, um, look, they're doing really good work, but they are not really an economic development agency as it once was proposed. They're a marketing agency. And I've said to some of you that we need to be very, very, very strict on having a focus on job creation, um, particularly as people with job security at the moment. Um, we know that there is going to be unemployment and we need to have a very strong focus on that. Um, so I think this will be um, an excellent innovation. I think that um, this uh, amendment, of course, gives the chance for council to have a say on what the criteria will be. And that I hope when we do spend the money that we will be brave and not just return uh, to a situation where our environment was being so seriously damaged and there was so much inequality. Thanks, Councillor Pennant. And uh, are there any questions that people have of officers around this, um, other than the obvious one, which is do officers support it? But uh, any questions, anyone? Councillor Young. Uh, so just tell me, so I, I haven't got the amendment in front of me now, but um, who, are the, who are the deciders on the City Recovery Fund? I mean, who are the judges of whether things meet up or meet the requirements? The City Recovery Fund. I mean, who who is that? Um, Mayor, maybe I can comment here if you wish. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I, I think um, it, it is early days in terms of the concept of a recovery fund and a recovery plan and um, a collaborative process to establish the vision and plan. Uh, so some of those details are, are, are yet to be uh, clarified. Um, officers did um, attempt to put forward a, um, a, an update to the recommendation after our discussion earlier this week on, on the recovery fund with the words under 4A, if you've seen um, our change 4A, ensure criteria for allocating funding from the city recovery fund includes support for creative and innovative sectors. Um, but it, it's fair to say that there's a lot of work yet to be done. 
So would it be correct to say this is really a municipal version of Dragon's Den? Uh, look, I, my, my comment is um, this is a high level um, proposal um, with the intention that a, a group of people come together in, a, in an advisory panel format to help us develop um, the plan and the, um, the details of what it's trying to achieve. And I imagine that that would um, clarify the criteria. Um, okay. Thanks, Barbara. Uh, Your Worship, can I just ask a um, question of why we're having questions to every amendment like this? Because sometimes the questions are leading our officers to almost have to get involved in the debate, like a Dragon's Den question. Yeah, so that, I hear, that should I hear, go to, the, that should go to the person who's moving it, not to an officer. No, the, the problem we've got here, and we do normally, and you will, will uh, know that, uh, Council Day, is that we do have the opportunity of asking for officer advice on amendments that uh, people wish to ask questions of, and that's exactly what we're doing here. Um, are there any other um, questions? If, um, get rid of that screen somehow. Are there any other questions that people have got? For who? For, oh, for okay. me or for right. the officers? Uh, well, they'll be of officers first. Uh, you you can deal with them either if it's uh, an issue of understanding the meaning of the motion, or if it's uh, or in right of reply. That's the two places that you, you get to, to deal with those. Um, any other questions? Before I've, I've got a couple. So, um, look, a uh, question of officers. I, I know what the sources of these funds. So the City Recovery Fund essentially is a new new proposition, which is is lumping together bits of what was city growth, destination Wellington, capital culture and major events. So my question is, uh, Barbara or any of your officers, what would in the normal course of events be um, expected to be being funded by uh, those funds? Um, Mayor, um as I said, the, the, the City Recovery Fund is an idea to, that we have um, come up with as a starting point to find a way of funding um, initiatives under a um, yet to be confirmed, fully confirmed City Recovery Plan. And so I think, um, I think the, the proposition here is, is, is just suggesting the kinds of things that could be considered under, under that plan. Um, if anything, I would say rather than direct officers, you might you might seek investigation of, uh, bearing in mind that officers um, are, are not going to be alone in um, providing advice to the council on a, a future recovery plan. I think your intention is it is that it will be a collaborative process with other key stakeholders in the city. I think that's a question for the mover of the, the motion as to what the wording was. So, so Barbara, my, my question though was, in the normal course of events, what would these things have funded? So we've got money that was there. We've got one and a half million dollars, as far as I'm aware, that would come oh, out I of what would have, would have been capital of culture. We've got some money which would have come out of major events, some money which would have come out of Dest Destination Wellington, and some money which would have come out of city growth. So there may be some things which aren't going to be happening anyway, but there may be some things that were, which now, which if this money was directed somewhere else, will not be able to happen. So that's that's my question. You're muted, Barbara. I'm Barbara, muted. you're on mute. <laughs> I'm, I'm muted. My husband would love to see me muted more often. Um, <laughs> um, we have provided the council with a list of this of the uh, proposed source of the starting point for this fund. I haven't got it actually in front of me here, but it was um, bringing together some funds that will be unspent through the lockdown period. Um, we also proposed that there could be a, a process of seeking match funding from other from other funding sources. Um, so uh, it, th th this is just a starting point to, to provide the foundation for a fund, not, not to take the place of other activities. Okay, and my, my final question is, um, would it be helpful at this stage if um, we were not too directive, but we would say to consider whatever it is that uh, are the things that uh, Councillor Paul is raising, which is fair, but rather than to direct you into particular areas, which tends to suggest not doing other things. Uh, look, Mayor, I, I think the wording that um, officers provo proposed um, as 4A um, was an attempt to try and to try and cover the council's desire to see these kinds of innovative support without being too specific. And I, I'd leave it for the council to determine whether they want to go further than that. Okay. Any other questions, people? Councillor Councillor Paul, you've 
um, you're happy with the wording as it is? Sure, and if people are comfortable, they can vote for it. If not, they don't need to. Okay, right. Okay, I think that means we're into, oh, okay, well, okay, we're, um... okay sorry, I will ask you one then, um, Councillor Paul. Just the, the word you've got there, steer the fund to, oh, it's just disappeared again. Uh, steer the fund towards revitalization and job creation through innovation and technology. Does that mean that things like events, in your mind, things like events um, and arts activities, et cetera, do they fit into that or don't they? Because if they don't fit into that then and they're excluded, then I'd no, like to know. So, so Arts and events absolutely fit into that. Innovation isn't something that's um, restricted to any particular industries. It's just allowing for support. So, for example, you know, we had um, someone talk about um, Wellington on a plate. You know, they're looking at how they deliver that, and they're and they're looking at innovative ways to to deliver that event. So, this could essentially fund them in investigating and implementing. Um, new ways of doing events. So it's not that it can't go towards events, it actually is looking at how people can innovate to actually respond to the context and circumstances that we're in in order to deliver those things. So it's not ruling out events or arts or culture, it's just saying that based on um, last year's um, CSC funding of um, you know, allocation of the city growth fund that was, like I said in my um, preamble, you know, whatever, that those were allocated over four different areas, which was arts and culture, uh, tech, sports and tourism. And I'm just saying here, rather than spreading those equally, we need to focus on innovation and technology, not rule out other areas. I think I understand that. Okay, yeah. right. Cool. We'll go back to if there is anybody wishing to speak. Sorry, can we um, remove the... Thank you. Right. Okay. Anybody wishing to speak on the amendment? Councillor Foon. Councillor Foon. Thank you. Um, kia, ora Young, kia ora, everybody. And once again, thank you for all the work and thinking. And, and it is an amazing experience to get to this point, but to know what's going on in the background. But um, just, I, I, I would wholeheartedly urge um, fellow councillors to vote for a fund like this that has a little bit of flexibility around it. We're moving into a time where we don't know what's ahead of us, but the community, our business community, our local communities have good ideas on what we can be doing. And at the moment, um, and these ideas are already coming and, and you know, business pitches, but there's nowhere to direct them because they don't fit anywhere. So having a fund at this scale that's going to create new jobs for people that are going to need them are a really vital tool to moving towards a revitalized city. So I really urge you to, to embrace the, the broadness of the, um, grant, the proposed grant um, because I think if we, I really trust that Wellingtonians are creative and collaborate enough to be able to step up to working hard to what we need to do to set ourselves apart as a city for the future, a city that's looking to, um, that the world is looking at and what we did to restore ourselves post this, this virus. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Young. Sorry. Um, so yeah, look, I, I, am, I am concerned about this. I'm concerned about its vagueness. Um, I'm, I'm concerned, as I said, I, I feel it is a bit like a municipal dragon's den. And I remember the New Zealand version had uh, Terry Serapisos as the judge, and we know what happened to him. Um, so I would just say it's really easy to spend other people's money. And I'm concerned about the fact that people can apply with no money of their own. And I think there's one great way of making sure you're very prudent in your application, that's put your own money at risk. Um, I would expect people to put some funds up um, or get some other backers and not, not rely on the city council. You know, we're a municipal organization. We're here to run the city. I think far more important to focus on pipes, on our water, on sewerage, on things like that. We've got to be super careful with spending ratepayers' money because a lot of people are going to struggle to pay their rates. And I just feel this is an irresponsible and vague use. It's the vagueness, I think, that bothers me the most. So I won't be able to support this. Thanks. Uh, anyone else? Councillor Calvert. Um, 
Um, look, I can't support this. I understand that Tamith is bringing in her views about this, but um, um, Councillor Paul's never been in business. He's never worked with the businesses of the city. And um, if you think about this money that's Sorry, been I, that's Sorry, I, have that's point, I have a point. I have a point of order. Yeah, okay. that, yeah, can I, just, I have worked with businesses, Diane. I have yeah. worked with them. Councillor Paul. I've worked with hospitality. Councillor Paul, sorry, Councillor Paul. Tragically, that is not a point of order. You, it has to be misrepresented. It's not it, it, true. That's not well, true. It's not sadly, true. sadly, unfortunately, our standing orders do not prevent people telling, um, saying things which are not true. You can certainly respond it's to it. Misrepresentation that is a that is a point of order. So, so misrepresentation, and I did check that today with officers. Misrepresentation of something said in the meeting is a point of order. That's a misrepresentation of my of me, Andy. Yeah, I, look, I I, un, I understand what you're saying. I sympathise with what you're saying, but that it doesn't make it a point of order. You can could I you could one? say it's offensive if you wanted to. Can I do? And then I would have to rule. Can I do offensive, please, Mayor Foster? Because actually, I don't think yeah, it's helpful. That is a point of order. It is that not is helpful to be complaining. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Sorry. Yeah. We're talking about other people's experience. We don't know actually what everyone has done. And thank um, you. I take the point of what um, Councillor Calvert, um, if you can just uh, would you like your... me to withdraw that comment? Would that make it a bit easier? Oh, let, okay, let's withdraw. Make it a bit more okay. Accurate, Diane, right. sure. okay, carry, okay, carry on. Well, okay, yep. so yep. look, um, as economic development portfolio leader, and I have to say is that well, there's a reason why we've got these portfolio um, because we are meant to be working in this space. Now, one of the things is that um, we, we're talking about this fund as if it's just free money. It's not. It's come from our, um, our, our commercial um, businesses. They need help now. And um, somebody trying to direct that to somewhere else is not going to help the situation. As officers have said, it was really just a placeholder. The work hadn't been done. They had their energies focused on um, emergency welfare on getting this package up in front of us not and and they were quite clear that it was only indicative and it was part of, it was under development so now we are trying to um, direct it in such a way without any evidence without any stakeholder involvement so I you know I, I just I can't understand why this has even been brought before us because we you know we haven't even really thought properly about it and got um, a cohesive view on how we're going to help our city recover. No one is a COVID-19 um, expert here. And no one actually knows what our city is actually going to need. What we do need is agility. And, um, and, and we need to work through this properly, but not just the, these odd amendments that, you know, that we've got a you know, bunch of people that will just say, oh yeah, that's a great idea, let's go for it. This is not our money. This is ratepayers' money, and a lot of this money has come from our, our commercial um, business ratepayers. You know, we have 73,000 residential ratepayers, 6,000 commercial ratepayers. 6,000 ratepayers pay 45% of, um, of our business, of our, our rates. So I think we need to give them a little bit more credit. We need to listen to what they've got to say, and there needs to be a framework for that to happen. And this is what officers will be working on. But thinking that we, we just wanna put it in a particular way, and it's not even all about a fund. It's also about you know, what, what practices do we need to change as well? So I would just caution everybody, um, if you want to support it, go, so be it. But I just really want you to caution about the decisions you're making and how we're making these decisions without any written evidence, without any proper information from officers and, and just think about what good governance looks like. So obviously I won't be supporting this. Thanks, Councillor Calvert. Anybody else uh, on this amendment? Uh, Councillor, oh, hang on, we've got Councillor O'Neill, Councillor Condi, Councillor Rush. Um, yeah. Just to quickly speak to, to this amendment, um, I will be strongly supporting this amendment. Uh, this innovation fund is about um, cluing in with this paper on recovery and through this issue, Wellingtonians will have a direct line to opportunity. It's what we've heard over and over again from different economists is that this, um, this crisis 
is putting up a, a huge challenge and that there is also an opportunity for innovation coming out of this as well. Um, I'm really confident as well that we need to be injecting into the new domestic economy um, and to be able to redeploy a whole bunch of services and ideas into, into, into Wellington as well. I'm incredibly confident that uh, Councillor Paul has the, the breadth of expert knowledge herself and she's also um, passed on uh, the names of different other economists that, while working with this um, and, and small business and big business owners as well. So I'm really, really confident with uh, Councillor Paul's background on this as well. Um, to the point about uh, ratepayer funds going into business, um, this fund is just, um, this fund is similar to many other funds that we have around council as well. And I think that, um, you know, when we make decisions for all Wellingtonians, we make decisions for, um, for opportunity, not just business as usual. So I'm really, really happy to be supporting um, this, this fund as well. And, um, and thank you, Councillor Paul, for, for the amount of uh, work that you've done and getting this over the line. I know it's been a, a really busy um, week and weekend for you. Uh, I think I hear Councillor Condi next. Sorry, we can't hear you. Apologies. That's better. Is that better? That's Excellent. Better. Um, Councillor Calvert mentioned agility, and I think that that first part of A, where we're actually talking about removing some of the restrictive criteria in the fund is, is really all about that. It's about agility and it's about removing red tape. Um, and looking at how we can how we can make this this easier to to access. And I just would like to acknowledge that the other point that we've made, which is that this is not the final decision on this. Point C says that this is coming back to council for a vote. So I, I really feel like the, the, the meaning of the motion here, the intent is that we're giving officers some clear direction to the future work that they have to do. And I, I think that's entirely appropriate as governors. Um, officers will be developing specific criteria. I'm sure that will be in consultation with stakeholders that's in the paper about having a, a a, a working group to put together a plan. Um, so I actually think that, that I'm quite comfortable with this this um, amendment essentially providing some direction for officers for them to be able to go and do some further work. Um, I also just have to quickly mention as the chair of the CCO committee, Councillor Pennett mentioned um, Wellington NZ and talked about them as a destination marketing um, outfit. And while that is something that they do a lot of, I just, I have to put the plug in to say that they do a lot of direct business support as well. Okay. And that, that they've often um, mischaracterized in that way. Um, for example, so far they've, for their COVID-19 response, they've um, distributed $100,000 already of grants for professional services. So businesses can access um, advisory and consultant services like HR or accounting to help them apply for government funds to help them reorganize their business to get through this period. Normally that funding would have to be matched dollar for dollar, but they're, they're giving out grants, grants of $2,500 to businesses in Wellington that will help them to, to get through this. So I just have to get that little bit in as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think I had Councillor Rush, then Councillor Fitzsimons. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I'm supportive of this uh, amendment, and, and the reason is, is because uh, even without it, there was a fairly broad playing field for whoever is administering this fund to, to make decisions around economic recovery. I, I think that also that the Wellington uh, in the next 12, 24, 36, or maybe forever months is going to be different to what it was you know up till recently and as a consequence I'd hate to be constraining the thinking around what could uh, facilitate the economic recovery um, by, uh, by by putting in a, a heavy focus on what we used to do in terms of marketing and events and so forth so I, I don't see any harm in, in broadening the scope in the way that we have I don't think the uh, 19B is a limitation in any way. What I, I do think, though, is that at the moment there are businesses that operate in the cloud who might want to relocate to Wellington from overseas because we are looking like we're going to get out of this a little bit faster than the rest of the OECD. So I, I think technology is quite clearly uh, an escape for any business um, that doesn't rely on people all being in the building at the same time. So uh, I think that's sensible. But 
Uh, I do think uh, I'd like to applaud the officers for pulling this together. Uh, I think that um, when we get this on board, we start getting some rigor around how it works. We start getting the, you know, key leading people of influence in this uh, city together and behind it, it will be a very powerful tool to bring us out of it. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor for Thomas. I just really wanted to um, join with others in supporting the work of Councillor Paul and Councillor Pennett in coming with this amendment. Uh, I think it's a very good amendment because it provides genuine practical support to businesses. And we know that if we do that, we can help save jobs. So thank you so much. Right, uh, anyone else? Not seeing anyone. Um, look, um, I'm, uh, Councillor Paul, I'm just going to say something here too. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of my, my trouble with this is I'm not quite sure how people will read it. Now, if I, if it is about trying to broaden the spectrum and not direct it too much, then I'm happy with that. And I think your first part of your amendment seems to do that. The second part seems to direct it, and that's why I asked the question about what kind of things. Because if you're going to do some more of something, you're probably going to do less of something else. And I did take that the marketing side of things is not is not deemed to be something that people want to do. Uh, well, that's what I took it, and you, maybe you can deal with that and write a reply. Um, it's, it, I mean, what we've heard from this morning, or the, uh, earlier in the meeting, I should say, was that uh, particularly the, the, the hospitality, event sector, et cetera, they're getting ready to do stuff as soon as they can do it. Uh, but they will need help. They'll need support for events to actually happen, and they will need um, uh, marketing of those events. People will need to know those events are on. Now, look, I'm sure that Wellington NZ, which is more than, well, I agree with Councillor Condy, thank you, uh, is more than just a marketing agency. It does support business activity. Um, a Creative HQ is an example of that, uh, by, way of, uh, by way of example. Um, but they will need us to do things which bring back vitality to the city. So my encouragement to you is just to be as broad as possible. By all means, say that there are areas you'd like to have a look at. That's fine. I think that's the first part of your amendment. But the second bit tends to say it's technology and innovation, I think it was, was the two, two terms that you used. And I would, that might be read as saying that some of the other things don't fit in with that, with that area. And I think um, I was just trying to find exactly where all the money comes from. But this is money by and large, which has come from the business sector. So the key bit is we need to work with the business community to work out what the best places that we can invest their money to support their activity and to help them get back on their feet. Uh, and it's not, I think somebody said, I think it was you, Councillor Foon, that the fund is the same as a lot of other funds and the way we do it, it's not a grants fund. And I think if you're thinking of this as a grants fund, you're wrong. Uh, it is, it's a fund that we have used to support a range of different business activities. So as I said, that the areas which we have been, this has been drawn from, it's not a new fund. It is, it is wrapping up what is left over from existing, some existing funds and what is likely to be available from some existing funds over the next few months. And that's the City Growth Fund, which is tended to support things like, I think everything from Biz Dojo to, um, to a lot of event marketing and activity marketing and events actually happening. Destination Wellington, uh, now we're likely to end up with a fair bit more of that at the moment because I should, should imagine Singapore here won't be able to, uh, to fulfill um, the necessary requirements there at the moment. Uh, Capital of Culture, which of course does support a lot of our arts, et cetera, events and the Major Events Fund. So that's where the money's coming from. It's not new money. It's money which is already in our budgets, taken from the, largely from the business community to support things related to the business community. And I guess my, the key thing for me is we've got to do things which bring back some vitality to our city once we, well, particularly our central city, once we reopen. So if you can keep it wide, I'm happy. As soon as you narrow it down, I get, I've got concerns. I, the safeguard probably is you'll see that you expect the criteria to be brought back. The only thing is that if there is money to be spent soon, until we get the criteria, you're kind of making that very difficult. But I suspect not a lot will be spent until we are out of lockdown. Uh, so I'm inclined to support your A, but not your B. Uh, and I think the C is probably okay. Um, anybody else? Right to reply. Cool. Um, awesome. So thanks everyone for their feedback on that. Um, very useful. And I was did manage to talk to most of you before um, this. So thank you all for your contributions. And thank you, Councillor Pennett, for seconding that. Um, just to touch on a few comments as we do. Look, I think Councillor Young, you know, you talked about it was it's very vague. 
this actually tightens it up. So I'm glad I can do that um, for you. Um, and around, you know, this money could go back onto pipes. Um, it actually can't, as Andy just um, explained, that it has a targeted purpose and has to be reinvested back into the businesses. Um, Councillor Calvert, look, I'm not going to entertain your petty comments, but I will respond to some of them. Um, I just, I just wanted you to know. I mean, some I did run these ideas past. Um, um, some point of order. That's, can I just Sorry. say point of order? Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't petty. Point of, offensive. What is the point of order? Can we, can it was we, a, can it was a definition of petty. Sorry, so wait, Councillor Paul, just hold up. What is the point of order, Councillor Calvert? Um, the point of order was the definition of petty. We were petty. That is not a point of order. Council Paul, carry on, okay. please. Uh, yep. So, um, you know, people from your own informal economic advisory group support this idea. So I think you know we need to give them uh, a bit of a bit of weight to their to their opinions as well. And also, you know, proposing that we go um, out point of order. Point of. Uh, sorry. Oh, look, I'm sorry. sorry. Point, sorry point, another of point of order. What is the point of order this time? The point of order was that the informal business group that I have supports this. Sorry. Now, and what's the point of order? The what's point. It's point? incorrect. Okay. Well, sorry? thank no, you for that. No, that's sorry, sorry. No. Councillor Paul, just wait till I rule on this, please. Uh, no. Councillor Coward, unfortunately, whether it's correct or not, a correct. Just as I said to Councillor Paul, that is, it may be, may or not be true, may or may not be true, but it's still mm. a point of order. Okay. Cool. Councillor Paul. All right. Yep. And um, and all I'll say is that you know we're proposing to further, you know. Pr proposing to go and, and add all these additional layers of, of, of consultation, although it is necessary and will come through the recovery panel, is actually not what people are asking for right now. They want decisive leadership. They want decision making, and that's what we're doing. We're making sure that they can access it now, not three, four, five months later. Um, look, and Andy, on your points, I agree, you know, um, I agree with most of, of your comments as well. Um, you know, we want it to be, you know, you're saying you, we want it to be as broad as possible. Actually, the feedback I've been hearing is that people want targeted support. I said when I moved this amendment that, um, you know, we don't have all the money in the world to solve a, a multi-billion dollar recession. And this is about targeting that support with the money that we do have. So it's actually important that we make it targeted. It's not about making a broad solution that will not address the need. So... I guess the last comment I'll make here is that I'm absolutely invested in a thriving hospitality, retail and accommodation sectors. Um, you know, these industries by and large employ young people and students, which is who I've been elected to represent here. That is your workforce. This is about creating jobs for them and other people who rely on this industry. So I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely invested. And that's why I've moved this, knowing the criticism that would come forward, because this is about innovation and allowing them to function no matter what the alert level, no matter what the lockdown and no matter what the criteria. So thank you, and I look forward to everyone's votes. Thank you. Uh, so what we're going to do, if you can, Cyrus, I think it's probably best if you, again, um, can flick the amendment up. Okay. Uh, now, um, I'm going to take the three parts separately uh, because I certainly want to vote on them differently. Okay. So I'm going to put uh, A, those in favour, please raise a hand. Sean. Yes. Sean, um, you, you able to see everybody, Sean? Yes. Okay, those in favour, please raise a hand. Okay, those against? Also, Calvert, Sparrow, Young and Wolf against. Okay, right, that passes. Uh, B, those in favour, please raise a hand. Those against, please raise a hand. Foster, Young, Wolf, Culvert and Sparrow against. Okay. And C, those in favour, please raise a hand. Those against. And that one is unanimous. <laughs> it, seems, it seems that we want to see the detail. Okay, thank you. We'll go back. Right. Um, uh, that, now I see there's one other amendment, which I'm suspecting, Councillor Rush, uh, that there will be no difficulty with, but can we just pop that up? Yeah. So move, Councillor Rush. Does somebody want to second that one? And then I'm going to ask whether people are willing to accept it, because I suspect they will. I, I have hands up from a large range of people. Um, to second it? 
Okay, yes. just uh, well, I'll pick. Um, sure. Who you want, Sean? You choose any. You choose somebody who hasn't already taken it. Probably. Okay, that'll do. Yep. Thank you. Right. Okay. Now, are people willing to accept this one? Because I'm suspecting people will be. Sorry to be. Sorry to be pedantic, yeah. but I, I would like to just have Councillor Rush talk about the meaning of the motion before we accept it. Okay, sure. Okay. Uh, is there a particular thing you want to ask about the meaning of the motion? It's just very just broad, so I'd just like yeah. to explain it. So, okay, yeah, Councillor yeah. Rush, if you can explain it then. So I think effectively what you're doing is you're moving it, and then we'll see if, pe if people are willing to accept it without uh, further debate. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll move it and, and say a few words. I mean, it was really in recognition of what we heard earlier today. We, we really need to, to help some of these uh, uh, these industries or, or these sector groups. And, and it's just a no-brainer. Uh, we, we've got to get those on-license holders being able to sell off-license. I mean, we've just got to do that. And if it means we need to get Parliament to change law, we've got to do it. We need to be creative like we used to be at university and got around these rules. We can do that too, because I suspect that no one's going to be enforcing any of this stuff, particularly rigorously. But um, that, that was really where I was looking to to take the conversation is to uh, to to invest to listen to to send a message that we heard uh, from the industry today um, that we're directing the council to look uh, hard at, at how we can support uh, in particular in relation to the uh, off on license point, but uh, but then more broadly as well. Does that answer your question, Councillor Condy? Um, yes. Okay. Are people happy to accept this? Uh, can you, um, Cyrus, can you put us back into um, yeah, where we can see everybody? Has a, has a are, people, are people happy to accept this or they want to? What are, hands going up, is that going, yes, we're happy to accept it? Yeah? yeah I'm seeing question, people happy. Is anybody not happy to accept it? Right, it's accepted. Okay. We're back to the, the substantive. Should anybody be still keen to keep on, uh, so, so on that's debating? Accepted. Okay. Yes, that's accepted. Anybody keen to keep on debating things or can we? That is marvellous. Oh, uh, Deputy Mayor Free, seeing that you did second, the, you, you're keen to say something? Yeah. Okay. Um, right. So look, um, I hope I, you don't I, open I, the floodgates. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I do want to thank the officers and the people who've managed this meeting. Um, and, you know, it's actually been gone completely, pretty smoothly. Um, and I think that actually underscores Tam's point that there is a huge amount that we're doing differently that um, I really support what Tam's brought to the table because what I actually heard from the hospitality industry is they need different ways of working because they're going to need to, I heard the Prime Minister today at one o'clock say every business has to think about how they're going to operate at every single level. And that might mean actually knowing who's coming in and out the doors down to the detail of name, address, contact phone number, um, they might need to know all their suppliers. Um, and, they, and, and I heard today from our submitter that they're going to need help with managing that. And if it comes through an app or some other new sort of technology, there's a huge opportunity there. So I think, you know, we're going to be doing things quite differently. And I really think um, in amongst all of our recovery plan, we have to be open to the fact that there's going to be to be new ways of doing things, just as we're actually doing things incredibly differently right now. And who would have thought last year we'd be sitting around having a council meeting on Zoom? Um, and thank you very much for making that happen to everyone who has, um, including not just my colleagues, but the staff. Um, although I, I um, didn't support going out with two different rates, I'm not going to vote against it um, in the final vote. I've accepted that people think that's a good idea. Um, I'm pretty clear in my own mind what I think, but, you know, I'll wait and see what the community thinks. That's what about, that's what consultation's about. I think there's been a lot of good thoughts go into this. I'm happy with all of the amendments, apart from the one I didn't vote for. I know we've had a range of views on that, but I think we're going out with something that's quite robust. There'll be lots of opportunity to get feedback on it. Um, well, this isn't the pandemic plan. I do get a bit confused at the moment about what we're talking about. But <laughs> we've given, yeah, we're going out with the pandemic plan today. We've given, um, we're obviously sending some quite clear signals along the process um, to the officers about the draft annual plan as well. So good work today, I think. I've got not too much more to say. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, I see a blue hand up there. Councillor Sparrow, do you wish to speak? Yes, just very briefly. It goes without saying that um, hospitality industry need as much support as we can give them. And this is just asking officers to look into the 
specifics of that. That's it. Thank you. That's nice and to the point. Councillor Calvert. Yeah, look, I'd like to would say like to say a few words. Um, um, as I, I mentioned before that um, none of us are a COVID-19 um, expert. Um, and I think the government itself is also first to admit that. But what we do need to show is agility. And I do worry sometimes our, our decision-making process in this formal sense sometimes can tie us up in knots or restrain some of our thinking or restrain some of our approach or restrain how quickly that we can act. Um, I think we've got to become a bit prepared to be a bit less um, less risk averse um, and, and probably increase our appetite for risk because sometimes we may need to move through, move things a bit more um, quickly. Um, we do have to be prepared to put aside some of our 10-year um, our plans and, and think about what it's actually going to mean um, over the next three to four years for our city. Um, and we really need to do some innovative thinking. I think that's that, but I don't think we should constrain ourselves to... Um, um, necessary what's been in the past, but we've also got to make sure that we are looking after our businesses that have invested in our city up until now. Um, we we need to remember what we what we're known for, um, and we need to know that you know everybody knows in Wellington you can get a good coffee, and you you know we have the great the best um, craft beer, and and we're known for our food events like um, Wellington on a plate. Um, and that's aside from, you know, a lot of the, sort of the other mainstream events that we have going on. Um, so we need to make sure that we get back to where we have been. Um, and that's going to take us a couple of years, but we need to be agile in doing it. So I would just ask my colleagues that we, when we think about how this is going to shape up, that we still allow some flexibility. If a really great idea comes up that we can move quickly and not feel that we have to wait for the next um, council meeting. and um, tell officers what to do, that's all. Thank you, is anybody else? No, well look, um, I will sum up then and write a reply. Oh, you've got uh, Terry. Oh, you've got Terry. Oh, Councillor, Councillor O'Neill, just in time. Yes, yeah, sorry, um, just wanted to touch on a few points that we've talked about today. We've talked about budgets, rates, and economic recessions, and different stimulus packages, and the way that um, council operates as an employer, the way that we stimulate others in our own local economy as well. Um, but when we boil this all down to it, the thing that's been front of mind for me and for, for officers and it, through every bit of line of communication I get is, this is about the care of people and the care of our city. Um, and that this crisis is really affecting the most vulnerable people as well. Um, and we can often get disconnected from that. Uh, it shouldn't take a pandemic for people to realize a moral outrage of homelessness or <coughs> inequality. And it shouldn't take a pandemic to, to recognize the value of people and childcare and essential work and hospitality and, and health as well. And I'm so pleased um, that we have taken such a strong focus in this package today, but I'd really like this to continue um, broader than that. I'd like to congratulate um, council officers, staff, Wellingtonians and people, communities around the world. It has been a community in action. We've seen um, um, the announcement of some fantastic like Te Pori, like the 38 self-contained units working with DCM and the night shelter. We've seen hotels lending rooms to homelessness. Um, food package requests tripling just in our own um, space and the amount of people pouring out for the student volunteer army as well and, and aged care um, and to really acknowledge the amount of work and effort that those workers have been putting through our own council but in our community as well and um, we, we sometimes get to the space to acknowledge these things but just to um, for me I'm really pleased this plan puts puts people front and center in this as well. And, and um, I've supported a lot of amendments today because I think that every single cent we spend needs to count and target those most vulnerable people um, too. So I'm really excited to see how this goes and, um, and listen to the, to the stories and the circles that we operate and engage with this plan and hopefully have it back in our table in a few more weeks. But um, just wanted to say, yeah, ka pai and um, I'm looking forward to it, uh, but thank you guys. Okay, okay, Councillor O'Neill. Right, well, I will, um, I will just deal with right of reply. Look, I want to thank you all for the debate. 
Um, I, you know, obviously um, some amendments I agree with, some I didn't, um, but I thought they were all um, well constructed and um, well articulated. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, I, my message basically is we're going to need to stay flexible in this situation. We, we are in a situation which we have never been in before. We hope we will never be in it again. Uh, and um, we don't know exactly how it's going to look. I'm cautiously optimistic, though, uh, that I hope that we'll be in a situation where we'll be able to come out of this and be able to start rebuilding um, our city, our lives, uh, and our people um, in the shorter term than almost any other country in the world. Uh, and I think that that's something if we keep doing the right thing, we have a chance of doing that. And that's the most important thing at the moment. Um, I just think we've got to be flexible. Uh, we have to work with our people, work with our businesses. They will bring a lot of experience and a lot of expertise and a lot of knowledge to the table to, to any conversation that they have with us. And we should be two ears open and listening to them all the way through that. I think um, out of what we do today, look, there are a lot of judgmental people. We'll probably all see them. That's part of the, the job that we, we face. Doesn't matter what we do, there'll be some people who will have a go at us uh, and say we've got it wrong. Uh, often they won't be very pleasant about it. Uh, that is a reflection of them rather than a reflection necessarily of us. Uh, but there are a lot of people who have enormous goodwill in our community. And as we go through this process, there'll be a lot of people who want to help rebuild our city and get it functioning again the way it should be, get it to be the city that we love because people love our city. And they want to have our city and its people back on, their, back on our collective feet. So, uh, and I just want to finish off by saying again, a, a huge thank you to all of our staff for the work that they are doing. Uh, in whichever sector of, of um, our organisation, uh, particularly the people who have done all the hard work in putting these papers together. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, and also I want to say just another shout out. Yeah, Paki Paki. Yeah, I just want to say another really huge shout out to all the essential workers who are keeping our city running and keeping us safe and keeping us fed. And with that, I am going to put the recommendations all together, unless anybody wants to take anything separately. Yeah. I don't think we need that up there unless, does anybody want anything taken separately? Can you put, put, put us back on the uh, main screen there, please, um, Cyrus? I just want to see if anybody wants anything taken separately. Cyrus? Sorry, I was muted. Just to clarify, number nine in the shared screen has been uh, is the is Council Condi's amendment that replaced number nine from the in, in the original. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Cool. Let's just put just changing the numbers. Right. Okay, can we go back to a screen where we can all see each other? Brilliant. Okay, we're we all happy that we put the whole lot as one. Look, no, no. no okay, so no, which one? No, which, I, I can. Oh, you're you. happy. Sorry. No. no. Can we just wants, have it? Because we so we want to read them. Can we just which okay? Page so some people want. Here? Okay, so the key, the quick question is: some people do want some taken separately. So, so no, no, sorry, you're gonna, see, I'm trying to find them on our papers. In our papers, it's, it's very difficult it's because you've got one screen and you've got to do two things on one screen. Cyrus, can you go to the top maybe and then start scrolling it down? If anybody yeah, wants to okay. take anything separately, just a second. Yeah. Okay, I'll explain. Oh, email it to us. Yeah, I'll actually email the whole substantive. The, the, the problem is you email it, we're still trying to look at it and look at, look at each other at the same time. Well, how many okay. screens have you got? Would it work if um, we identified, um, would it work if we identified all the ones people didn't vote for, you know, that Diane, for example. I, I'm, what I'm asking one. is, Cyrus, yeah. if you can slowly move through it, go to the top and if you can slowly move through yeah. it and if people okay. can note to themselves which ones they want to vote on yeah. separately and okay. then we'll close the screen okay. and then come back to taking whichever ones it is that people want to work both separately on. Okay, so here it is, it starts with you. Okay, I think you can probably go to the next screen, Cyrus. Hang on, you've got to start from five there, yeah. Okay, carry on down to the bottom, I think. Well, not quite. Okay, and down to the bottom. Oh, 
Okay. Everybody worked out which ones they want to take separately, if any? Mm. Okay, we'll go back to the screen. Right, councillors, if you can tell me which ones you want to vote on separately. If you, if you want to vote on something separately, please raise a hand. You've got Councillor Young, Councillor Calvert, Councillor Sparrow, and the Deputy Mayor. Okay, Councillor Young, which ones do you want to go separately? Sorry, you better unmute, you, unmute yourself. Uh, 13, 14, and 19. Thank you. Nine, 19? 13, Not the whole 19. 13, 14, and 14, and 19. Okay, right, okay, we'll take those separately. Councillor Calvert, any, any different ones? I'm, a, um, I'm just looking at the, I'm just going back through the um, document. Um, I think it's the same as um, Councillor Young's. I suspect it probably will be too. Councillor Sparrow, mm -hmm. is yours the same as well? Yes. Okay, Councillor Free. Sorry, you you need to unmute. Um, I just wanted to clarify what um, Andy Matthews said that the document would be prepared with the main um, option being the 4.95, correct, but, correct. but a contrast option of being 2.15. In that yes, case, that's correct. Happy, yeah. I'm happy to vote for that. Okay, thing. right. Okay. Um, so uh, 13, 14, I'm going to ask that 19B be taken separately, right? Um, and then we'll do the others, the A and C as well. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to move, I'll move 13, 14, 19 A and C, and then 19 B. And then we'll do the rest. Okay. Okay, just one second. So that would be so these are all 13, 14. 13, 14, 19B, and then 19A and C, and then the rest. And the joy is we'll actually be able to see each other put our hands up this time. I respect everyone's right to do this, but haven't we just voted on these? There's a yeah. degree to it. There's it's a degree recorded. to which we have. It's not, Sean. Um, I'm afraid that this is the what tends to happen is that people want to make sure that their vote is recorded all the way through, whether it's been recorded the first time or not. But that's just what people have always done. So, yeah, it's already well, all that recorded. Talk right. Right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Already right. recorded. Yeah, yeah I know it is. I I know it is. Okay. Um. Right. We'll put thirteen. Are you ready, Cyrus? Yeah. Sean. Okay, right, 13, those in favour of 13, please raise a hand. Okay, you got that, Cyrus? Sean is I've got it, yes. Yeah. Okay, those against, please raise a hand. You got those? Yes, got that. Good, right, okay. Actually, I could make it quicker. I'll just put those against because I suspect yeah. there'll be a majority in favour. Okay. Mm -hmm. 14, those against, please raise a hand. So same five. Well, yeah. Yep. Okay. You got those? Yes. 19B, please raise a hand. <laughs> Councillor Sparrow's got the technological way of doing it. All right. So Okay, that's I'll the same, same five. five. Yep. Okay. And 19 A and C, please raise a hand. Councillor Cole. Okay, done. Right, and the rest. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, Councillor Young. No, I, I didn't want them taken together. I thought you were doing A, B, and C separately. I, I did B first, which yeah, you voted I, against. Yeah, and I thought and yeah, I, and and I, th I thought you were doing A and C separately, but it doesn't matter. Look, it doesn't matter. Okay, so do, which way do you want to vote on those? I would vote against A, and I'd vote for C. Uh, well, okay, we'll take A separately. Sorry, I'll do that. Nineteen A. Those against, please raise a hand. Okay, that's Councillors Wolf, Calvert, and Young. And 19C, those against, please raise a hand. That's nobody. Okay, right. Okay, that takes us to the rest. All those in favour of the rest, please raise a hand. <laughs> that, I think, is unanimous. It is. Right. Thank you. I think, we're, okay. I think we're done other than the closing karakia. So, look, thank you, everyone. Councillor Day, do you want to take us to the closing karakia? Namahi koutou. Um, unu hia, unu hia, unu hia ki te uru tapu nui. Kia wātia, kia mama, te ngākau, te tinana, te wairua, i te ara takatū. Koe a rā e rongo, whakaeria ake ki ronga, kia wātia, kia wātia, ai rā, kua wātia. Kia rā.
Thank you, everyone. Um, we thank can you. and thank you again, all all to to all the officers. And <laughs> ka kite. Thank you. Have, have a lovely week. Thank Easter. you to all. Thank you to all our listeners as, and watchers as well. Happy Easter. <laughs> Happy Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs> Happy Easter. And a, and a well deserved rest, hopefully, yeah. for our yeah. staff. Happy Easter, all. I hope so. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Cyrus. Thank you all. Thank Great, you, work, everybody. Everybody. Great work, everybody. Great work. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Thanks, Jennifer. Thanks, Cyrus. Thank you, Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Jennifer, Cyrus, Sean. Awesome. Thank you, Jennifer, Sean, Awesome work, Barbara. Thank you. All of the officers. Thank you. Thank you. Get some well deserved rest. Not going to the bench.